Yeah, that's... Oh, yeah. People don't know that you can do this in uh, clients, but for, like, movie making, you can do... Oh, man, can you not do it? It's, uh... What? Oh, it's not working. But you can, like, modify the FOV, so you can do, like, really cinematic shots and things like that. Anyway, let's get to it. Let's watch this map. Okay, so coming into uh, this first match here... Coming into this first match... We wanted to roll out onto something that could counter goats because there's this little cubby here on the point that you can kind of hide your team in in order to get an initial cap. So we need something to be able to attack this specific area on the point. And if we have Farah, you know, Farah can either head around these buildings, you know, we can poke through this initial crack, or if we transition to the point, you've got this nice pillar here that you can use for cover to try and like spam people out of. The Sombra is good for two reasons. First of all, Sombras build EMP charge insanely fast um, against goats because they can just decloak and instead of trying to go for a hack on a hard engage, they can just spam from a crossfire angle and build EMP really quickly, you know, force different cooldowns out, cause the diva to be drawn off of the Farah, etc., etc. Now, the second reason the, the Sombra is good here is because the Sombra can scout while leaving the uh, translocator in spawn. And if we run into our counter, which is going to be a McCree and a Brigida, which is scouted right here, then Surefire is going to translocate back to spawn and swap onto Widowmaker. Now, Widowmaker does an absolutely fantastic job of countering the McCree, and the Brigida uh, gets countered by the Farah. So even though the uh, the Zenyatta and the McCree together can be really good against the Farah, as long as Farah plays evasive and safe, um, you know, the Sombra, sorry, the uh, Widowmaker is going to be, like, really putting a lot of pressure on AKM. And with two long-range heroes, the Brigida themselves can't really do anything. So you're going to see Surefor translocates back to spawn as soon as we've scouted uh, the McCree and the Brigida. And then we'll go Widowmaker to return. And at this point, we have kind of Mangachu who's just trying to just poke and whatnot and play it safe. And then this is where France kind of fucks up in the fact that they go really far forward with their tanks. And then they get a lot of chip damage, which is going to cause them to retreat into places where they're safe. Now, Wins tries to retreat here, and he's going to get shot in the face. Because he jumps. And I think he gets shot. Where does he get shot? It's going to be really soon here. Boom. Right there. So, Wins gets shot. Um, really dangerous spot. Like, the tanks rotated to a, uh, retreated to a spot, whereas the squishies on the back line uh, tried to, like, stay on the high ground. And this uh, opened things up. Note almost gets demecked here, but that pickoff from uh, Surefor onto Wins is going to open things up pretty dramatically. Note barely survives, and he's going to get healed back up. XQC is going for the contest. He gets taken out, unfortunately. And they do get the initial cap, but we can still win this because we have both our DPS up. And with Wins down, they can't really control any of the engagements here. So Note finishes off Poco with the assistance of Banny. Mangachu's just hiding. And then we've set up the crossfire, right? So the reason why the Farah is so far onto France's side is so that Surefor has a really good angle. And you, there's no real, there's nowhere they can hide to stay away from our DPS. So France is going to get about 20% off of this, but they are going to be able to, uh, like, they're going to lose for first fight. Poco comes on here for the contest, uh, gets a few more percentage, but the upside for this to us is we're kind of okay with trading, like, 10% on the point here. Preferably, they would have gotten 0% on the cap, but because they did get initial cap, they fed us more ult charge, and now we're coming up onto quite a few ults. Like, look at our ult uh, stack right here. Very, very strong. Now, Benbest here has switched over to Reinhardt, but they're staying on um, the McCree and the Brigida here, which isn't the worst thing ever. The, uh, the Reinhardt is going to be able to... So, let's just pause this here. The Reinhardt is going to be able to block quite a bit of spam, but only from one angle and only when he's actually quite a long ways away from a team if we do manage to set up these crossfires like if ben best here is shielding from surefor first of all he can't get very close or surefor is going to be able to shoot over top of ben best's shield so ben best wants to try and take a long angle where he can shut off both of the angles against the farah and the widowmaker but unfortunately, now it's not going to be able to happen because Mangachu's in from behind. He was safe. He drops down with the barrage and gets Unko. Mangachu does it in a pretty safe location, and then they don't turn around to punish him, so he is going to be able to get a kill and survive, which is the important part here. 
XTC is moving on to the point to contest. Gets a bubble to try and isolate here. AKM's not in it, and they take that cubby that I was talking about previously. XQC is really low here. Note comes in to try and save him with the defense matrix, but XQC once again kind of gets taken out there. And France had talked about that they wanted to focus XQC in order to uh, kind of tilt him. They thought that that was a potential that they could kind of exploit. But uh, honestly, I don't think that's something that any team would reasonably be able to pull off. XQC is actually in-game a pretty emotionally stable person. He doesn't tilt unless you kind of like do May shit against him on Junkertown. So, and here, this is basically just cleanup. Crimzo has put himself into Valkyrie just to kind of help. I'm not sure if that was entirely necessary, um, but we should also be able to get a Resurrect onto XQC uh, after this fight is cleaned up. If Crimzo still has res. Is he gonna do it? I guess not. Okay, so now we're coming up to a point where we're 40% to 30%, we're in control. We have sights, which doesn't really do a lot for us, except allow us to kind of understand that the rotations that France, or sorry, not the rotations, the pathing that France is going to take to try and get to the point. You know, they have quite a few ultimates out here. They've got the transcendence as well as they're coming up on beat. But uh, since we don't have any big kind of murdery combos in the form of like grav or something like that, it's not, these support ultimates aren't as effective, especially when you're playing a ground-based composition um, such as, you know, a GOAT's composition or something like that, one of the best uses of a support ultimate is to use it in order to hard engage onto a target and be overly aggressive, extend out of position through open spaces or things like that. But you're not going to be able to find those kind of clear-cut situations in which you can engage. So here they're going to be coming in. XQC is doing a great job just getting some cleave. He also has some primal. Poco tries to contest. He does manage to kind of flush XQC out of there. And France is coming forward, but it doesn't really look like they have a plan here. Like, so France has put themselves into the middle of this point here. But what is the purpose? So let's look at this crossfire, right? Let's look at Widowmaker first. Widowmaker is going to be the first one because she's the less, less mobile of the two. So these are the angles that um, Surefor has on France. This angle right here. So the next thing we want to look at is what is the angle Mangachu has? Now look at the angle Mangachu has on France. So this is like picture-perfect crossfire. And France's pathing, instead of trying to shut down one of these angles or force us into the same angle, goes right between the two of us. And for what purpose? You're not going to be able to out-rotate a D.Va and a Winston. So this pathing, whoever called disengage from France, fucked up. This is bad. This is really bad. AKM like needs space to work, but he's going to get chipped down. You know, Unko and Wins and AKM, they're already getting chipped here. And when you're getting chipped like this, that means that the Farah and the Widowmaker no longer even have to get headshots, just like singular directs will be enough to trigger XQC to jump in and finish you off. Like, XQC has Primal here. He can go pretty hard. So if Surefor calls or if Mangachu calls that they hit any one of these three people just on a, like a body shot, that's going to trigger probably a hard engage um, from our tanks to go in and clean up, and then they're just going to get utterly demolished. So let's see how it actually works out for them. Sure, for so far hasn't hit anything, but AKM's trying, but you know, Widowmaker McCree matchup. Into the iris. So it's forced the support ultimate, but XQC has his jump and should be able to get out of here. Because he jumped when he was flushed out by Poco, right? So he's looking for the jump, and he's gone. Fuck you. So Banny is going to beat as well. It's and XQC um... decides to use the primal to try and get the uh, boops off, while AKM is using High Noon here. Now, this is actually, I saw this actually, and it was, look at how soon and Ben Best protect AKM's High Noon here. So Wins drops the Primal, and uh, soon drops the Rally. So they've now used three support ultimates in this fight. Poco in the background chased down, I actually didn't see that. Poco and whatnot chased down Surefor. Oh, so Poco's up here, knocks Surefor off. What happened back here? It's uh, Unko. Nice. Nice, Unko. Ben comes back. Ben best takes out XCC, but no one takes out Unko. Mangachu has the barrage. Doesn't think he's going to need it. Grimms is still barely alive here. 
Oh, this is the fight that, uh, this is the fight that AKM cleaned up on McCree. This looked impressive, but really it was a cleanup, so it didn't really matter much. Boop -a -doop -a -doop. Yay, good for you. Okay. So next fight, we're at 93%. We know we only need to one need we need to win one fight. Now, one of the things to talk about here is the fact that throughout the World Cup here, you're going to see the fact that um, the sorry, the word, words are hard. Words are escaping me. The 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 main counter to a Brigida and a McCree composition is a GOAT's composition. But uh, this is the point in time where Canada had scrimmed for the past two team for the past two days against Team UK, a team which at that point was considered to be the worst of the European teams, right? The worst of the European teams. And we had lost pretty badly in scrims, which means that even though on paper, the option to play here, GOATS, would be probably a really, really good thing um, for us to play, we were super hesitant uh, to play goats in the early games until we kind of realized that, oh, UK was actually a strong team and losing to them, you know, isn't as big of a big deal. You know, we'll still try and force, um, you know, we'll still play anti-goats as much as we can, but we're no longer afraid to try and, like, hard counter uh, McCree comps with goats in the future. But at this point in time, we're, like, super scared of playing goats. So we don't do a swap for one fight. And, you know, considering how well uh, Mangachu and Shurfor were working together on this Farah and this Widowmaker here that, uh, you know, I guess, and this is another thing, is that the coaches didn't get dugouts at the playoffs, so I wasn't actually able to um, listen to the comms of the team, and I also wasn't able to, like, look at the players' perspectives or overhead perspectives or anything like that. So if you were watching the games at home, um, using the World Cup viewer, you actually had a better idea of what was going on in the games than I was, than I did. I had to watch off of either a TV show or off of the actual physical jumbotrons in the arena, which made things extremely challenging. So I actually don't know in any of these matches uh, with Canada, I actually don't know what the comms were or what the calls were. I can make guesses, but and they'll be pretty informed guesses, but uh, I could be wrong. Then best kind of just gets deleted. Nerf this. Justice reigns from above. And Megachu gets barraged. Okay, so let's look at uh, Ben Best's fuck up there. So here's the like, let's let's try something new. Okay, so here is the setup. Here's the setup that we've got. So, Mangachu and Shurfor are already setting up the crossfire, right? Mangachu's coming from main, and Shurfor is a little crossfire, both to get information and extra shots onto people. Now, one of the things that I've talked about here is that uh, um, when you're playing Reinhardt like this, you have to play angles, and you can't try and control map as much as you would on Winston or anything like that. Now, Wins, is he going back for Unko? I think so. Surefor has uh, hit Poco from the side. Poco turns to react to scout to this. But I don't like Ben Best's position. Now, there's two mistakes here from France. The first mistake here is that they're pushed up really far. Mangachu is going to be at altitude and be able to shoot over Ben Best's shield, not only hitting the people behind him, but hitting Ben Best himself. And Surefor is on the flank. So can I actually activate my pen while I'm doing this? Mm, I can't. Oh, maybe I can. Ooh, it works. Okay. So we've got this angle here, right? And then we've got this angle here from uh, Mangachu. And Ben Best is in front, which means that not only is he in trouble, but his backline is trouble. France would be better off being, you know, around here or around here, maybe on the high ground if they wanted. Any one of, like, anything in this area would be a better choice than being pushed so far up, especially why, while you're at Unko and Wins. Wins going back to Taxi Unko. So not only are they in a very aggressive position where they can't get as much uh, 
you know, protection or um, sustain against them. They're doing this and they're kind of trying to hold off an engage where all we're trying to do right here, we're not in the hard engage phase. We're not in the hard engage. We're, this is posturing still. And France fucks up so badly that we're actually able to delete Benbest in the posture phase, mostly because of this. So poor communication from France, poor positioning from who I would suspect was Benbest's call is going to cause them to get, you know, utterly deleted, I think is the, the right term to use here. Boom, done. Bond comes out, gets nothing, and then shoot barrages to clean up. So, really, France gifted us that fight and that point take, and as a result, this map. Thank you so much to Shade for the nine months. Been a while. Still my favorite streamer. Hit 4.3 on Zarya. Uh, Bogchamp banned from your Discord. You got... Shade, you got banned from Discord. What did you do, Shade? <laughs> what did you do to get banned from my Discord? Oh my goodness. Wasted Barrage. It was Final Fight. Didn't matter. Um, Azora Senpai. Thanks for the four months. Mr. Bob Sparks. Thanks for the two months. Says, great to meet you, meet you at OP Live. Teach me more. Yes, sir. Nimbus Ordeal with the seven months. Says, eh, Pog. And the Turbo Keck with the four months says, I love you, no homo. Beardless Beardman with the tier three, holy shit, dude, for six months in a row says, I don't feel like I'm not in the rank I deserve. I don't feel like I'm not in the rank I deserve. I play with friends as tank supports around 2.7k on autopilot and mid gold on my DPS account. How do I get to bronze? <laughs> and here I was trying to figure out your question. <laughs> oh, man. Is this where y'all are hiding when I sleep in? Yeah, Annie, how you doing? It's good to see you. Um, the Waifu Knight with the nine months, welcome back. Mick Tilted with the five months says, Yahoo! And Zulu Charlie with the five months as well. Welcome back. Ooh, Spooky Chiptune and Sock Dolliger. Hello, Sock Dolliger. How you doing? Okay, this next map. So I talked about this yesterday, but I'll talk about it again here. On this map, the plan was to... Um, uh, we had practiced in scrims to play Brigida and McCree on this map. Now, our scouting had told us that France was likely to play um, either Super Soldier Five, on this four. map or um, Goats. Now, one of the things is that we thought that if they were playing... Uh, another thing that our scouting on France told us was that they weren't playing McCree. Now, AKM did end up playing McCree in... Um, in this match, so I'm not sure why our scouting was wrong. The Super Soldier is just the term. Um, that it's a it's a it's a, a version of what France is playing, but basically with Soldier instead of uh, uh, McCree. It's Gladiators Legion used to run it. We tried it on like Oasis Downtown. Anything with like really fast, stunny, bursty things with Soldier is referred to as Super Soldier. But uh, so our scouting here kind of fucked up. Um, we got it wrong in terms of like predicting what France was going to do here. And when we were going to Brigida and McCree, most teams meet at this drum here and then, you know, have their engagements and you can have like a Winston around and jump over here to isolate in the back line or something like that. So we decided that the chance of them running the super soldier comp, which is like Brigida and McCree, but without the stun would allow us to play Sombra Doomfist into it, um, easily, more easily than if they had a McCree. And if they ran goats, then if we ran out on Brigida and McCree, they would win the initial counter, and it'd be a lot harder for us to swap in time to contest the first fight. So what we elected to do basically last minute here was to play the Sombra and the Doomfist. Now, what we do is we roll out in the same location, um, and then we're going to want to try and scout for where their goats composition is, and then, you know, surround it, take it out, do all that fun stuff. But instead... We kind of get frozen because none of our expected scenarios actually show up. So you're going to see we roll out. We don't see goats. We don't see super soldier. Instead, what we see is Brigida McCree Moira. 
Now, this is really confusing to us, because first, this is not something that we've ever scouted, nor is it anything we've scrimmed against. Usually, if you play the uh, the McCree and whatnot, you usually go with uh, the Zenyatta. Now, thinking about this, why do you go, like, what does this comp say to you guys? What, when you look at this composition, it's not Brigida McCree, Winston Diva, Lucio Zenyatta, which is like the very, very simple standard Brigida McCree composition. It's the, uh, it's we've swapped Winston for Reinhardt, we've swapped Zenyatta for Moira. What is the purpose of this composition? Indecisive goats. A few people are getting it right. From what I would guess, from what I would guess, like Lucio and Zenyatta and Brigida is not a composition that's very good at taking large amounts of splash or cleave damage. So this composition makes sense if you want to play something like Anti Farah. You know, if they're expecting like. <laughs> It's, it's still not the best answer, but pretty much the only thing that I can think of that France wanted to do here was protect themselves against the Farah, give their tanks more sustain against double projectile or double long-range heroes, but they do still lose out the Zenyatta threat. Like, they lose out on Discord against Farah, against any other targets and whatnot. So this was just a strange comp. Now, as kind of, like, fucked and weird as France's composition is here, they actually take the first cap because we can't decide what we want to do how we want to gauge, engage, or if we want to swap in time. So their fuckery actually ends up paying off because they were unexpected. So you can see us poking, trying to figure out what we're doing. Some people are like heading back when they called it. And then eventually the points unlocked. We're like, ah, oh, we need to do something. And not only do we uh, not decide how to engage properly, we let them get first cap and then feed. So this is like textbook, don't ever do this, you suck ass if you do. Um, and Kennedy gets fucking rolled on this first fight. So yeah, that was uh, bad. That was really bad. <laughs> so now here, again, the... the, the I'm getting sick, and I don't want to sniffle in your guys' ears. Okay, so, again, when we're looking at France's composition, their composition is weak, and we have, right, so we have, a, like, a circle of counters here, in that, at the very top, you have goats. I I really hate that, for some reason, I lost my pro subscription to um, Epic Pen. It's really weird to me, but anyway... We'll just do it this way. We'll look at the sky, and we'll use this as our whiteboard. So we have, you know, a couple things here. We have goats at the top. Then we have McCree. Yes, that's how you spell McCree, obviously. And then we have dive. Now, this is how the counters work, right? So goats counters McCree. McCree counters Dive, and Dive kinda counters Goats. So this is like the circle of counters here. Now, when you're a team, you have to decide like which one of these you are the strongest at. Like France has decided that they are the strongest at Goats, but they recognize that Canada is the strongest at Dive. So their second, um, you know, their second composition that they're going to want to learn is going to be the McCree comp. We recognize that we're strong against Goats. And their, you know, their their pick in order to try and win against Dive is going to be McCree. So if we learn Goats in order to beat McCree, it forces France back onto Goats, which makes us be able to go back onto Dive, which then we can win. All right? So there's, this is kind of like how the circle works and, and whatnot, is that right now in the current meta, there's Goats, McCree comps, and Dive comps. But within Goats, if we enhance and look at the, the circle of Goats, if we're looking at the circle of Goats goats right at the top we'll put moira moira 
Now, Moira has a shit ton of healing, an absolute shit ton of healing. It's insanity, especially when you're running three tanks that have big health pools. Moira is really good if something is attacking you and you're on go. So if you're playing against Faras or anything like that that really wants to fuck your shit up, Moira is the best in terms of, like, compositions. Now, if you're in the GOAT's mirror matchup, so if you purely exist in a GOAT's world, then we can have um, Ana. Now, Ana, with the Nano Boost, the Sleep, the Purple, provides a lot more utility and power against the Moira Goats. So if you want to beat Moira Goats, you go Ana into it. Now, if you want to beat Ana Goats, you need to go Zen into it need to go Zen into it. Because with the Discord, as soon as the Projected is used on the Reinhardt, it doesn't matter if they have more healing, you know, you can just tank the Purples, but if their Reinhardt has Discord, they're going to lose their main tank, and their main shield's going to evaporate. So you play Zen to beat Ana Goats. But then, if you want to beat Zen Goats, there's kind of two options. Oh, is my head in the way of Zen? Well, I've, I've like, Zen is just, like, behind my head is Zen. Um, if you want to beat Zen Goats, you have a couple options. The first one is you can just go back to Moira Goats because Moira is the only kind of healer that has the ability to just out-sustain any possible discord. This is, again, how I kind of drew the squiggly line. Moira kinda counters Zen Goats. It's not a guaranteed thing. Zen, in the matchup, Zen Goats is the strongest, by far. Zen is right here. I can see my head's in the way. Zen is right here. In terms of like the mirror matchup between goats, Zen is the strongest, and Moira can counter it. But one of the other options you can have is something with high cleave or splash. High cleave splash. Now the thing with that is because Zenyatta has such little healing, if you do against, go against these things earlier where I was talking about like Faras, Widowmakers, anything like that, you can destroy Zen Goats, especially if you have something like you'll see later in like the Canada-US game. If you can get a Winston into this mix, the Winston's cleave damage against a Zenyatta Goats composition is so high that you simply win the War of Attrition. They run out of healing resources and then they all just slowly die. Cleave is hitting multiple targets. So a Winston, who's Tesla Cannon is zapping multiple people, is cleaving multiple targets. Or sorry, the Canada-UK game. So this is like the circle of counters. We have the the Goats, McCree, and the Dive, but then within Goats we have this additional circle of counters. So kind of knowing what I just said right here, take a look at the, the field as it is. All right? So they have Moira McCree. Now this is the weird thing in the fact that if we go goats, we have two options here. We have Ana goats and we have Zenyatta goats, both of which should be able to counter the composition that France has. And France has a bastardization of a composition. Uh, they have a McCree and a Moira, which is just bad. It's just bad. I'm going to be completely honest here. Um, so we can like we can get away with playing Zenyatta goats because AKM and the McCree doesn't really do much for them in terms of like playing as if it was a goats composition here. But we're still terrified of this goats matchup. We're still terrified of this goats matchup. So we decide to mirror. And this is where we could have beat France probably a lot harder uh, than we did. Like the, the game between France was really quite close, but we could have won a lot easier if we were actually confident in our own play. But like our confidence in our GOATS play got pretty utterly destroyed in the scrims the two days prior. So this actually goes really poorly because we don't play the planned and discussed counters. So we'll come out, they have high noon, Banny uses speed to retreat around the corner. Do we lose mech off this? No, okay, so we go back in. What's going on here? Push him back in. So, think this through for a second. Uh, so we decided to go on to Zenyatta. And so we have basically the same compositions here, but they have Moira. So think about what the difference between Moira and Zenyatta means for each team's various win conditions. Just, I'll give you a second here. That is a weird and disturbing Widowmaker emote combo. I never want to see it again. <laughs> I 
Yeah, we have trance and ultimates and what and all that, but uh, like, so the thing is going to be that with the Moira, uh, with the Moira in play, they have way more heals and can, can sustain for way longer and can heal people faster. We have Zenyatta, and we need to burst targets down. We can burst down their Brigida. We can burst down their Ryan Hart, which is a little bit harder, but still very, very doable. Um, but the thing is that we can't, in a normal Zenyatta Goats mirror matchup or something of the sort, you would want to do something like either force the bubble out or wait for the projected bubble from the Zarya to be used. And then as soon as that happens, go in and combo everything onto the Ryan Hart. Just please dead lol. Um, but now they have Poco on the Diva, which means that we can't really go for a, uh, a stun combo so long as Poco has Defense Matrix because he can, you know, block all the projectiles. He can block the Discord, like the Discord, not the Discord itself, but like the Zenyatta's orbs and sure for uh, just Peacemaker shots, right? So this is going to be a lot more challenging for us to be able to actually win this matchup if Poco plays it right with the defense matrix and can keep uh, Ben Best alive through any attempted stun combos. So we're in a bit of an awkward place, and France has much more sustain, which means that they don't really want to or need to hard engage here. They can kind of like fall back, give up room, they can just out heal us, and they're in control of the point. So it is in their interest to try and stall this out for as long as possible. So how does this actually play out here? Unko's trying to open the angle to get a lot of cleave, which is bad for us because we don't have a large amount of heals. And this has forced Mangachu off the corner Where's here. This? Poka comes up with the bomb. I'm going to sneeze. I don't think this bomb was necessary. Excuse me, last second block. But Mangachu and Banny both got split here. And Mangachu gets taken out. How you doing, Shane? Good to see you. Okay, so Banny got killed because he tried to like go over to Mangaju to help him out, and then on this fight, you're gonna see France having like really good team play, really good team play. It's boom. Right there. That was a terrible angle to be in. I phased through the building. So this is one of the unfortunate parts is, although you can't stun down a, uh, a Reinhardt or anything like that using like projectiles, you, know, you can still get a shatter through. A defense matrix isn't going to block shatter. It's so hand. we go for the high noon. They move in. Really good stun onto XQC. And uh, Mangachu, even with a shield up, gets dropped. Now, when we're talking about, like, the GOATS matchup when this becomes a thing, the way that you have to survive against a shield bash combo like this is there's a couple different ways that you can do it. But the most reliable is going to be able to block the actual shatter uh, from your backline using things like a Zarya personal bubble, a Zarya projected bubble, which we did not have, or a Brigida yourself. But Brigida, not everyone is going to be able to line up behind the Brigida. So the only way that you can actually um, do this and defend against it when you're playing in this sort of composition is for your Brigida to be able to be playing pretty aggressively and force the, uh, the other Brigida to either shatter them or to interrupt the, uh, the attempt on the Brig Shatter. So let's see it one more time. We're going to be coming up here. So we should be able to track that Ben Best has Shatter. Did I go back too far? I don't think so. So it's here, XQC comes back, and then they're moving forward. Oh, come on, pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it. So Mangachu is too far back here. Soon was forward, and Ben Best was forward, and both of them are coming forward here. And if the Brigida here recognizes that they're going for this play, they Brigida herself, um, it's <laughs> the only thing, the only way that you can survive this right here is going to be bashing either the Brigida or the Reinhardt. If you bash the Brigida, the stun isn't going to get off, and Ben Bess is going to look like a fucking idiot stunning into or shattering into XQC shield. If Magachu stuns Ben Best, then even if XQC gets stunned, Ben Best's shatter is canceled. Now, this is really super difficult, because if you do this too early, you're going to have used your shield bash to go forward. And if you've done this, the chances of you being like outside of your Lucio's 
uh, aura for speed is going to be really, really good. It's probably going to be, it's probably going to happen there. And without a Brigida shield bash to retreat, they're going to be able to go on to you. So if you shield bash forward, it's too early and soon kept the shield bash, they're going to be able to punish you. So this is extremely challenging and it's why it makes shield bash such a difficult combo to defend against is because your Brigida will either feed or do nothing to stop it. And the amount of Brigidas who actually pull this off in games, very, very, very few. So this combo is insanely hard to defend against, but it's basically on your Brigida. And this is another reason why if we are playing with the Reinhardt, we should probably go over to full Goats so that we have the Zarya, because both defending against the Zarya's Graviton and the Reinhardt's Earth Shatter, having both of your bubbles work even better. Because how do they kill you with a uh, a shatter? Well, it's line of sight and both projected and personal bubbles from Zarya not only protect yourself, but they protect your behind you from line of sight. They protect people behind you in line of sight. And this happens for bomb as well. In the same way that you'll very rarely kind of see uh, support ultimates be used to try and save yourself against Gravitons if it's tracked that the opponent has a D.Va ultimate. Because if the opponent has a D.Va ultimate, even if you're transcending, everyone's going to die. Uh, even if you're using Sound Barrier, probably still everybody's going to die. So normally you're going to be using support ultimates in order to hard engage and in order, in, in, instead of like trying to prevent a very explicit death. Now there's one fight that I remember, uh, we'll come back to this, but let's go to, not China, Canada, South Korea, King's Row. Let's watch how a good team does this. Yes, yes, yes. Is this it? Yep, that was it. Okay. I want you guys to watch this. I want you guys to watch this and just see how impressive this was. So, Fate used his shatter. Gushue has his. Now, look at this. Leave is on the left side. Gushue goes on the right side. So they're going to flank around to set up this bash shatter here. Fate shield is low. They're moving in. South Korea recognizes that the bash shatter is happening. There's the bash. Onto fate. Right? Leave just bash fate. He's stunned. He can't block. Gushue is in hammer animation. Look at this. Look at this. Fleta and Carpe shield up, bubble up, and look where Animo and Jonak are. Let's watch this again. Watch Leave and Gushue, and watch how, watch how South Korea's actions change as soon as they recognize this is happening. Pass into the iris. Counter pushing. Come on. Nerf this. Anyway. So. I thought it would be an important thing to point out. You can always go check and take a look at that fight. Um, where were we? We were over here, weren't we? So here we just use Transcendence to take the point. We just run over them. It's not really anything scientific. 
chain support ultimates to keep XQC alive and aggressive for as long as possible. And we do take this point. So we actually triple support ulted here with the rally as well. So this fight isn't super interesting. The remainder of this fight isn't very interesting just because like they win this. They like it's 99 to 0. They just wait till they have grav and they grab us and kill us. So I'm gonna swap to the next map. It's not that exciting. Ready for battle. Ready for battle. Mecha base. Now this one was interesting. So if you guys remember what I was talking about with the circle of counters earlier on, um, remember how I was talking about how Goats counters McCree Brigida, which counters various dive compositions, including Somber Doomfist, which then counters Goats. And within Goats, you guys remember the order of Goats uh, counters with supports? This is an, like, if you're looking at World Cup games, you need to understand this to understand what's going on. Moira gets countered by Anna, which counters gets countered by Zenyatta here. So we roll out on Ana Goats, thinking that they're going to be on Moira Goats, and they would be on Moira Goats because they think we're either going to play uh, some sort of, maybe they think we're going to be like Pharaoh Widowmaker again, or our Sombra Doom. Either of those, if they think we're going to run out on anything like that, they should roll out on Moira Goats. <laughs> We roll out on Ana Goats, thinking we're going to counter the Moira Goats, but for whatever reason, they run out on Zenyatta Goats, which counters Ana Goats. And we expected us to be able to catch them off guard with this. So XQC goes way in, takes a pretty aggressive stance here, and then it's kind of like, oh fuck, and we still haven't scouted their Zen here. Like, we're still confident that they have Moira. And then it's like, well... They've got Zenyatta, XQC gets discorded, and we're like, oh, fuck. And the thing is, XQC is getting discorded, there's the stun to get some extra damage in, and France is just going to all in us. Mangachu gets a great shield bash out to escape. XQC tries to uh, Ursh, or sorry, fire strike just to get some ult charge, and then everyone else, Banny's going to be like, get the fuck out, and run away. So we get out because we lost the prediction on terms of the rollouts. And then we immediately swap to, right, circle of counters. We're going over to dive with Winston, right? So not only does dive counter um, goats, but they're on Zenyatta goats. And Zenyatta goats really does not like fighting against cleave or pressure because they simply cannot sustain. So sure four got the hack on to wins here, and then everything is just going to fall apart for France. They are, I believe, going to get the first point capture, but uh, it won't mean much for them. Do, do, do. Goodbye. I got hammer and used it in that fight. That's insane, but it's not going to do anything for Ben Best. You should have saved it. So, unfortunately, and this is like, again, really, really poor discipline on the side of Team Canada here, is that if, you, if, you're, if you've been watching, um, we lost first cap on both... Uh, on both Sanctum and Mecha Base here. Both of them. So, really very poorly disciplined play from Canada here. Um, if we are going to be doing counter swaps or what that, we want to be able to contest that point. Uh, instead, yeah, that's the reason I unpaused it. I realized there was beeping. Still some things, like pausing should pause sounds as well. But uh, yeah, so here they're coming back in. And... Class, does anyone recognize the swap from France, right? Gotta get off that Zenyatta. Got to get onto the Moira, which is going to be the best GOATS composition in order to defend against a dive attack. Now, they also do something interesting, which this was scouted. Um, uh, AKM onto the Sombra. This was scouted. We didn't think it was going to be that much of a problem. Surefor is pretty good at the, uh, um, the matchup there, and it provides, like, they lose stuns and gain hacks, but we can still interrupt hacks a lot easier than we can interrupt stuns. Like we can def we can interrupt hacks by just tickling the the sombra. We can interrupt the hacks with a actual shield or whatnot. But 
just simply tickling a Brigida or trying to isolate a Brigida isn't going to stop her from shield bashing through those things. So we didn't really, we thought that if France decided to go onto the Sombra um, goats, we could play at a faster pace than AKM could either get set up. Or if AKM did get set up, we could force the translocator out by sure for playing counter and then force a 65 while AKM was uh, in transition. Um, I'll and I'll I'm I'm sure I'm, I just feel like I'm shoving the fire hose down your guys' throat and pulling the trigger. Like, are you you guys still with me, or is somebody like oh, I'm so fucking done? I don't get it. Is this okay? Okay, looks like you guys are good. So we're not really worried about it. Like AKM here is playing backline Sombra. So it looks like with AKM here, if we did scout this, uh, that would basically mean that we don't have to worry about backline and we just need to play faster uh, because we can interrupt those hacks pretty easily if we go in kind of all together here. Mangachu fucks this one up, unfortunately. He gets nanoed and he tries to um, go in with Meteor Strike, I believe, and gets punished for it. So he should fire strike or Meteor Strike in this location right here and get stunned. Snap. This is an interesting bomb, um, just because it was frame perfect. Um, Captain Planet, one of the, the guys who did statistics for the Overwatch League, tweeted this out, that it was in the same tick that EMP triggered that the bomb triggered. So we're talking like a millisecond of difference here. Same tick. This. this one was unplanned, yes. <laughs> That was an unplanned one, yes. Anyway. And with that, we get to gain control of the point. This, however, is like another good example where... One of the things, and I think the casters talked about it, but we lost Mangachu here, right? We lost Mangachu, and this puts into a 6v5 situation. Uh, and in a 6v5 situation, this is also like... I don't know where I want to go with this. Korean Overwatch, I noticed very early on during the Overwatch League, um, Korean teams and players tend to reset a lot less often or whatnot. And even though we lost Mangachu here, like we have ultimates, and it's one of the things that we talked about, is that if we are on compositions like this one where we don't need everyone working together, like if you lose one of the components of GOATS, like GOATS is like a battleship, for example. GOATS is a battleship. If you lose, you know, the turrets, the hull, you know, the bridge or something like that, it still sails, but it's just worse, right? It's just a worse ship. It's shittier. It's easier to destroy. Each piece that falls off makes it absolute ass. But if you have a composition that plays split, like uh, Canada's composition here with bomb, with EMP or whatnot, um, anything like that, then you have kind of like five dis five or six destroyers. And even if one of your destroyers gets taken out, all of the individual pieces of your composition still play at full strength. So, you know, in scrimming against Korean teams and things like that, it's actually... Um, I noticed that, Alik. So I, I did notice that. I'll get to that in a second. But um, in like scrimming Korean teams or something, there'd be situations in which we're defending 2CPB, like the second point of 2CP, and we would get two picks. And then um, one of the things that would happen is that the Korean players would uh, um, continue to ult, even though they were two, down two players on like the second point of 2CP. And then they would try and do this in order to get reinforcements. And like, sometimes it would work because we didn't expect it. We expected and kind of got relaxed as soon as we got two picks thinking that, yeah, that's obviously reset for that team. But they're like, boom, and they would start clapping us and whatnot. So um, this is one of the things that I kind of like and I try to get teams to work on is to recognize when they can still win when they're a player down. So in this situation, like, again, I wasn't listening to comms, but I'm not, I doubt that this was a, um, like, if we look at Surefour here, 
I doubt that this was scripted. And the reason why I doubt this was scripted is because I'm pretty sure he translocates away. Let's watch Temple. Tem Temple's, uh, oh, no, that'll be in a bit. Come on, look at Surefour. So Surefour translocates away here. Oh, this is my jam. And then kind of like runs away to get heals. And then... Okay, no. Maybe it was planned. I thought Surefour translocated way farther out of the fight. So, but it's possible that was planned. Again, I wasn't able to listen to comms, so I don't know. Like, I thought he translocated to a much farther place away, and he, like, walked in and threw his translocator to get there at the last moment. But, uh, could have been planned. Maybe not. Maybe. Go. <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um, so I had talked earlier about how we had scouted France's goats composition, but we weren't worried about it. And I actually just realized this now. I just realized this now. Um, but uh, they are playing the Brigida instead of the Zarya with their somber goats. So we actually got our scouting wrong on a second point, is that when we uh, thought that they were going to play somber goats, we thought that they would have dropped the Brigida, but they dropped the Zarya. So we would have expected something like... Uh, um, you know, AKM Zarya soon, uh, uh, Sombra, or something in that in that in that sort of way. But uh, so this was actually an unscouted composition. We had planned to run against a Sombra goats where they had dropped the Brigida instead. So I love you, Unko. So yeah, I guess a second piece where we got our scouting wrong. Okay. What's the next fight? Next fight, we've got Barrier, we've got Primal, they've got uh, Rally and a Diva Bomb, and they're coming up on EMP. It's also a lot harder to use EMP Diva Bomb against a team that plays Split. XQC's fighting Poco here, AKM's trying to farm him. Oh, he gets stun bursted down. That sucks. So XQC gets caught out there and stunned before he can activate Primal. That's unfortunate. But... Ben Best gets hacked. That's going to be pretty good in terms of ultimate charge. And then AKM uses EMP right as Mangachu goes in. That's a really good uh, uh, EMP from AKM. This is something that uh, we liked to do against other teams is that for, on points like, let's take for example, on points like Numbani A. Oh god, the beeping. Stop, stop, stop beeping. On points like Nabani A, if you if you know that the opponent has something like Nano Blade or EMP Blade or anything like that, you can usually kind of send your supports into Narnia basically to protect them. And if you try and if the team who has the EMP or the Nano Blade tries to like overextend on those really really defensive supports, they're probably going to die because they're going to have to use all of their cooldowns just to like get on the supports, and they're not going to have anything left in order to actually kill them. So one of the things you can do with EMP is don't always think that you have to go to the people and EMP them. If you can force the objective, and then right as they're coming in, EMP, super, super valuable. So this is kind of what happens here. I need to go farther back. Okay. So AKM's on the point here. Now, if we look at Mangachu... I like it how it slows down the transition between heroes as well in slow-mo. So, Mangachu's probably going to jump and then Meteor... Or, sorry, Seismic Slam. Go on, do it. Here we go. And watch AKM's timing on the EMP. No Seismic. And Mangachu gets fucked because of that. So, beautiful timing on the EMP uh, from AKM there. Here, you're just going to see supports up top stacking to jump on the point one at a time to contest. So, Note's about to die, and as soon as Note goes down, probably Banny's going to drop first. There Banny goes. He's going to die. Crimzo will drop next. And there's Crimzo going to contest. One at a time for contests. Goes for the sleep just because he wants to be an asshole. And we're just getting some extra ticks. XQC's back on. He's got Primal, but he won't invest this here. Well, he's hacked anyway, so it's not like he could. 
Sure four is the next one on. Translocates out after breaking Poco's mech too. That's huge. Cool. So 89%, 20%, Poco has to suicide and we've got a crazy amount of ults coming in. So we only need one fight here. And this one is actually pretty crazy. I've already looked at this one in the replay viewer. This fight happens like right here, I think. So this is actually really good too. In the fact that, uh, ooh, we can go through the floor. AKM is actually playing like a really, really good Sombra here. Really, really good. So he can get his mech back. Poco needed a mech back. AKM's coming in behind with the scout. That way they know that we can kind of wait whether we're faking. Because one of the things that the uh, dive needs to do is get control of the map. Um, so if we split, AKM's going to be able to tell this. So there's the shatter from Ben Best. Yeah. Look at another, like, when we're talking about how close this game was between Canada and France, there were so many insanely lucky things that went in Canada's favor. It made France look a lot worse than they actually were. But again, we're going to look at this uh, this earth shatter here. So France knows where we are because AKM is scouting, and that allows them to move Ben Best in towards the choke so that they can stuff us um, right in this choke point, and we can't play split we can't get control of the map or anything like this surefor is coming in behind with the earth shatter and let's see Ray, what happens here how you doing mama Chu? good to see you but uh so we're moving in xqc still has his bubble so he could block but benbus is gonna hammer boom surefor is decloaking he's got a 0 0.7 to second delay on the emp boom the earth shatter actually hit the ground and if anyone was standing here they'd have got shatter that's a propagation wave right there shatter air shatter is a projectile it's not instantaneous it moves forward with a speed so when the, the the earth shatter is here when the earth shatter is here it would have hit four four would have been a four, maybe a five man earth shatter. <coughs> Hacked lol. And you can see, Note was hit by the earth shatter. Note was hit by the earth shatter, but the earth shatter was canceled when the wave of the earth shatter was there. Feeling powerful. So, that's how this fight went so very heavily favored of Canada, in that Surefour got two EMPs, which were basically millisecond perfect. Millisecond perfect. I actually, before this, did not know that if Earthshatter has hit, and Reinhardt is either hacked or EMP'd, that the propagation wave of the Earth Shatter will be cancelled. I actually didn't know that before this video. And then they die, and Canada takes Busan. That's how close Canada was to losing Busan. That's how close Canada was to losing Busan. So when people say, lol, France sucked, they got 3-0'd by Canada. No, this game was incredibly close. The score line does not um, the score line does not indicate how close of a match this was. It was a lot closer than 3-0 would imply. Oh, do they retake here? I honestly forget. We win this map regardless. But... Oh yeah, this is where AKM kills three. Right. We still come back in and win. We've got 99% now. How do we win the next fight? Already used the bubble. Are we playing split? So we... Uh, this is where we go. See? This? Remember what I was talking about? So AKM is playing here. Uh, Unko wins Poco. All three of them are here. Now, when AKM was behind, you'll see this a lot on this map, where sometimes you can rotate between these doors, and it's very, very hard for a team to scout. Like, if you're here, 
what you can do is you can like push up and then you can be like, oh, jokes, we're going to try and go through the other door. But then you can be here right as soon as you're out of sight. And then the opponent's like, oh, fuck, they're rotating. And then they'll rotate to try and match. And then you're like, jokes. And then you use Lucio to speed back right up and out of the door while the opponent moved down to the other side. So here we actually look like we do get the drop on them. And they haven't rotated three of their members uh, down to match. So this is going to be a pretty one-sided fight because it doesn't look like France's backline reacted to our rotation. Ben Best is going to have to force out. No eat soon. Pulse bomb, which is huge. And now XQC's Nano allows him to take out Poco. And that fight goes pretty poorly. Sure, four lands the hack onto AKM, which is just insult to injury. And that should be the game. So yeah, if you don't have scouting, it's almost impossible to stuff on Busan because you don't know if a person backs off through this choke, if they're going to be coming out that choke, or if they're going to be baiting you and actually do just want to get high ground. So. And he's beat. So AKM actually played really well. There you go. There's Busan. Could have gone either way. Honestly, could have gone either way. Glad it went to Canada. But uh, France played pretty well. There was just some unlucky moments for them. Okay. Um, I'll just answer some sub messages, and then I'll answer any questions you guys had. Temple, I want to see, bro, please. I'm probably going to do them in order. Oh, that's the wrong one. Yeah, I'm going to do them in order so I can vault next. Do you not? Unko, what? You don't want to watch? You don't want to watch Eichenwald? Why don't you want to watch Eichenwald? Really? <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, uh, Triage with four months says, hey, four months. We missed the three sub because I haven't caught a stream wall. What are your thoughts on Ash? I absolutely love her. I think Ash is really balanced. I think they did a great job with her. Um, I managed to climb to plat in a week for the good, good tournament. And I'm hype. Good to see you streaming again. Thanks, good. Good to see you too. Uh, Demo Metallica with a four months says, four months. Uh, we go again. XQC sword. Welcome back, dude. Tron Weasley with a seven months says, seven months. Congrats on the great showing at the World Cup. Thank you very much. Uh, Yoshi Man with the two months. Rickham with the eight months. Welcome back. Nightshade Aura with the two months says, Thanks for all the tips and videos you put out. Trying to get better, and you have helped a ton. Cheers, Nightshade. Uh, Virtuosic with the prime. Smack Bear with the eight months says, Welcome back to the Isotundra that is Alberta. Feels cold, man. Perry with the eight months. Next with the five months. Ali Frere with the eight months says, One month until our sub baby. What should we name it? I think we should name it Jane after yours truly, Jane. Did anybody have questions about the Busan map before we move on to Eichenwald? I talked about Defran literally the very first thing I did this morning, so if you want to have the Defran discussion, just go watch the VOD. It's the very start. Yeah, Defran discussion was at the very, very start of this stream. Playstyle difference between Mangachu and Agilities. Uh, Agilities is a lot faster paced, really good with movement based heroes. Like on Hanzo, Agilities will play closer and use his kind of like lunge and his wall climb to be a super evasive piece of shit, whereas Mangachu will be playing farther back, you know, hitting the more accurate shots and uh, being a lot more of a patient player. Especially on like Brigida, Mangachu I found was a better Brigida player in Goats, whereas Agilities was a better uh, Brigida player in like McCree, Brigida McCree compositions and dive compositions. So Agility is like really... Um, great awareness in a chaotic situations, uh, really good movement, and uh, faster projectiles. And then Mangachu is patient, much more of a thinker, higher awareness, slower projectiles, things like that. So, yeah, those are kind of like the main difference between the two. They're both extremely, extremely good players. It's They're not clones of each other. They don't have overlapping pools. They have their strengths, and if you play them to their strengths, you can get a lot out of them. Can you talk about the circle of counters and circle of goats thingy again? I don't want to do that twice. Water and Earth. Thoughts on Torb in a comp sense? Uh, Torb is not good in comp. We didn't. We never played Numbani or Gibraltar. Like Canada had Torb strats. Maybe one day I'll talk to them about them. But the, really, the only good use of like Molten Core is to deny an area where a dive team can like go. So if you're kind of like standing on high ground Numbani, you can Molten Core the floor during an initial dive just so that the divers can't actually stay up there where you are and you can like force them onto the low ground so yeah torb's not very good they missed and blizzard missed the mark on that one like his e is nice but you know his turret and his ultimate are pretty shit for pro play now 
Oh, Samaritan with the two months says, thanks for the very informative stream. I've climbed from triple digits to plat since I've started watching. Hope to share with you my progress as I climb to diamond and beyond. W8 with the six months says, you don't even notice six months with such great Azaria game. <laughs> yep. Hey, I'll have you know, I'll have you know that Zarya was my most played hero last season, and I had like a 73% win rate on her. But anyway, okay. Let's get into quick cleave. Ex okay, so like uh, cleave is when something hits multiple targets. Um, so like a fire strike will pierce. So if there are two targets lined up, uh, a fire strike will pierce. So it's hit. it'll hit one target and then keep going. Cleave is if you can hit multiple targets at the same thing with this like so with the same thing at the same time so tesla cannons will cleave fire strikes will pierce oh uh, somebody said i missed their bits did i i don't have a bit message didn't show up friend i don't have a bit message if you sent it oh i do see doc with a ten dollar says roses are red jane is bald the amount of goats in this game is wild that doesn't rhyme it doesn't rhyme at all. Come on. <laughs> oh, you tweeted that a guy showed you a tech you'd never seen before and kept it for World Cup. Do you, yes, I'll show you that one. I linked it earlier in a previous stream, but I'll link that one again. Uh, or I'll just show it on stream. Let me go find it. It's on my unlisted YouTube channel. YouTube channel. Here's the uh, fancy tech. Do, do, do. Creator Studio. Okay, pay attention, chat. Turn your volume up. I'm not... I'm going to... Turn your volume to max for this. This isn't a bait. Turn your volume to max. I'll play one more time. Listen, how loud that land was. Listen how loud this one is. Listen how loud this one is. And then listen how loud this one is. So there's four different ways that you can adjust the landing noise in Overwatch. So it, this really helps for kind of like flanking people and preventing your audio from giving away your position. So yeah, there's there's four different ways in which you can adjust the uh, the volume of your landing animation. It works on all heroes except for those that double jump. The double jump heroes work differently. So yeah, there you go. Have fun trying to figure out how they work. Ugh. Um, so in order to, bleh. okay, so in order to do the first one, what you do, I'll give you, I'll give you a hint. I won't tell you how to do the literally silent one, but in order to get like a quiet landing, what you do is all heroes have a animation for falling, right? They go into this animation and then the animation finishes as soon as they hit terminal velocity. If you go off of an edge without jumping, but then you press jump, during the falling animation, not after the falling animation is completed. But so like right after you walk off the ledge, press space. It should be too late for you to jump, but too early for you to be like completed the falling animation. If you do that, you will, it's, that one is the most consistent and is a very, very quiet landing. So there you go. There you go. Let's take a look at Icon Vault. So our plan on Eichenwald is Eichenwald was not one that we practiced a lot because we honestly felt pretty comfortable on it. Um, but we decided to go with the Sombra and the 
Faro once again, and that the Sombra can hang around and be an asshole in this area of the map, and the Fara, even if they do have a Widowmaker or a McCree, can use this pillar here in order to be really, really safe and just kind of like peak fire and harass. So it's good against both of France's main compositions, any composition that involves um, like the McCree that we saw on Busan or their Goats composition. This is good against both of them. Now, unfortunately, it's not going to work out for us, and it's not going to work out for us because Unco and AKM uh, connect to just delete Crimzo. Yes, yeah, XQC's mouse wasn't working on this map either. What's Lucio's job in this composition? A, if you're playing Lucio instead of Ana, you have removed a potential dive target and or weakness in your composition. Um, Banny can also boop in order to kind of like peel, but you're not peeling for a support in this instance. What you actually can allow, because you're playing dive into what is presumably goats, you can allow your tanks to actually escape um, long enough for them to use their mobility to get away completely. So if Banny is kind of like hovering around XQC and Note when they're actually hard engaged or anything like that, their aura helps. Um, but also if somebody kind of tries to like chase them down, you know, you can boop a Brigida off of your Winston, you can boop a Reinhardt out of hammer range of your Winston, and that should be able to keep them long enough for their cooldowns to come back up and for them to escape and get assistance uh, healing from like the, the Mercy or escape to a health pack or something like that. So... Here you just see sure for scouting vision and mobility are the two most important factors uh, at pro play and vision scouting so you know vision scouting and mobility so they'd be able to like move into position based on the information uh, like if you can master those two concepts it's those are what I consider at least the most overpowered um, abilities or abilities in uh, pro play. So we're going to scout this out. This changes how we play. Get information on what they're doing right away. We know they have Brig. They've swapped off. And now they're going to a uh, dive variant. They're going like the standard Brigida and McCree. Now, so for us, this is fine. It's kind of annoying to us um, in that AKM, like the McCree is pretty good against the... Uh, so like the McCree here is pretty good against both of the Fara and the Sombra, but there's a difference between countering reactively and countering proactively. So a McCree cannot force an engagement on a Farah, and a McCree cannot force an engagement onto a Sombra. So countering reactively is a pretty mediocre counter. Countering proactively is kind of like a Winston countering a Widowmaker. Please don't read it and don't, get, don't be like, oh, but in this situation, no. Like... The Widow, uh, just take that analogy at face value. The Winston uh, can proactively chase down and shut down a Widowmaker. That is proactively countering. But if the Farah is peeking, peeking around, you know, high geometries and the Sombra is playing at range and farming or focusing other targets than the McCree, the Sombra can force engagements on targets that are not the McCree, whereas the McCree cannot force engagements on targets that are the Sombra. Hopefully that, that was, anyway, you know what I meant, hopefully. So this is where shit gets bad for us. And you can see that Banny, like as planned, Banny was sitting right at the uh, edge of aura range for XQC and XQC kind of jumps onto the high ground. Ben Best goes to retreat and then Crimzo thinks that Ben Best is coming for him and Crimzo decides to fly back up to Agilities. Oh no, the purple orb. <laughs> The purple orb of death. Good thing I'm at full health and almost next to cover. Jokes. Jokes. AKM lands a discorded headshot. Takes out Crimzo, and even though we punished Ben Best for his attempt to punish XQC, that's going to cause us to lose first point. So first fight loss on Eichenwald first is really bad. That is not good. That is not good at all. Now, on the upside, we have Farah here. Um, so we have the option to like hold right at this choke. So this is like really, really good here if we want to do that. This is kind of like one of the major benefits of uh, having Farah in transitioning between 
the first and the second point is that if you're in this area, Farah can hang around. Not only can you spam at extremely vertical angles onto anybody who's trying to move through this choke, but you can also be a complete asshole and come over the top and kind of like do flank barrages from behind or things like this. Or you can be like one, two, and then jump jet out and come back to this side. So this is like Farah's playground if you can really stuff them into this choke. Now, because we had lost our first fight and we didn't have a lot of ultimates or whatnot, we wanted to, to immediately go on to the uh, Sombra and the Doomfist. Now, this is another one of a little bit of a, an interesting choice here. Do you guys remember the Circle of Counters? I'm going to refer to the Circle of Counters. I don't even know how many fucking times. The Circle of Counters is like, you need to know it if you're even going to play. So... If you remember the circle of counters, you should recognize that right now Canada is playing into our counter, right? McCree and Brigida uh, counter dive, especially Sombra and Doomfist. So now I want you to kind of and think about this and ask yourself, why did Canada explicitly swap off of, you know, whatever composition we were playing and we swapped onto a composition that on paper is countered by France. I just want you to think about that one for a second. No, it's not XQC's mouse. The answer is that the circle of counters ignores the map. And we're going into a map here in which Sombra and Doomfist are both very, very strong on. And in the same way that we were talking about, like, it, I included this in my AMA uh, with China or whatnot, but uh, there's the difference between knowledge, understanding, and comprehension. And this is going to get super philosoph philosophical, but bear with me here. When you're playing Overwatch, or if you're trying to be an analyst for Overwatch or a coach for analyst, you have to know the difference between knowledge, understanding, and comprehension. So I have taught you the circle of counters, which means that you know the circle of counters, right? That, that is something you know. So if we're looking at the comparison between Farah and Widowmaker, you know, you know that Widowmaker counters Farah. So knowledge is knowing that uh, Widowmaker counters Farah. Understanding is when you know why Widowmaker counters Farah. And then comprehension is knowing when Farah counters Widowmaker. So that's, uh, you have to know the exceptions to the rule. So you either know something to be true, you know it's why it's true, and then you know when it's not true. That's the difference between knowledge, understanding, and comprehension. So... The, the circle of counters is a, like, a suggestion. It's a generalization that you can use to apply to a lot of different circumstances. But we're, just like how I was talking about on the first point, where you're having McCree has the ability to, or in the mirror matchup, in no other factors being applied or anything like this, um, you know, a McCree will beat O'Fara. But the McCree doesn't have the ability to force onto the Farah here. And in the same situation, one of the other weaknesses of France's composition here is that they have the Zenyatta. They don't have the Moira that they had on Busan. They have the Zenyatta. So you can get away with kind of cleaving them down and burning their resources. Uh, France's composition is one that wants to be very kind of quick, decisive, and burst targets down. They like to use that uh, uh, Zenyatta discord. They like to use, you know the threat of AKM actually landing discorded headshots like they did on first. They can even like burst down a diva if they land the shield bash first into the flashbang second. Chain stun, discorded the entire times, both Unko wins and AKM all just like pumping in the headshots. They want to be really, really, really bursty. That's what they want to play. But Canada here has a lot of places where they can hide and retreat. They can hide here with XQC, Note, Agilities, Surefor, Crimzo, and Banny are going to be on high grounds where France cannot 
force an engagement onto them. So our support line is going to be safe. XQC can drop off of the high ground without using leap. And then if he, he sees them going towards him, he can jump back to high ground. And while France tried to commit cooldowns onto XQC, notes their sure force, their agility's there. And they're going to be slowly getting worn down in this battle of attrition that they can't sustain through so long as they're playing Lucio and Zenyatta. So that's why Canada is playing into our counter here. We're okay with it. I was drinking, so I didn't get to talk about it. Watch XQC here. Dropping. He's getting plink, plink, plink. He's dropped. He's the fuck out of there. Notes there. Notes the fuck out of there. Agilities is there. Agilities the fuck out of there. In, out, in, out. We lost XQC. Ben Best is up. Can't force. EMP. They're dead. This jump is actually insanely hard to make on Winston, though. Like, if XQC hadn't fucked his jump up, they would have survived, and this would have been even more clean. But again, even with XQC having died, we're fine. We're fine. And then here, France's smart move is to probably play one fight with Transcendence and then swap Moira Goats. Moira Goats or Sombra Goats uh, would both be fine here. Looks like they're going into a transitional composition, so they want Moira, but they're going to use one fight with Transcendence here. Now, this is where I think France really shit the bed. This is where I think France really shit the bed. Um, in, like, all of Eichenwald. I think this was the worst mistake that France made in the entire series. In that France, for some reason, attempted to out-rotate dive. Okay. And remember what I was talking about? How mobility and, like, vision... Mobility and vision are two of the most powerful things. No, they are the most powerful things in professional play. Mobility and vision. So right now, Canada has the advantage in both. We have the knowledge of where France is going. We have the knowledge of what they want to do. And we have the mobility to evade them. We're playing, like, they lost the McCree here. But they still have the beefier composition. And they want to kind of... One of the things that they can do in order to abuse this is that we're weaker in a fight, is they want to kind of make us fight in places where we don't want to fight. And if they're on the point in pressuring... Now, Poco is solo contesting right now while they kind of, like, you know, move around. But now they're trying to play a composition that is meant to death ball in a split format. So Poco pushing solo while France tries to out-rotate a Sombra Doom composition is not going to work very well. So you know where they're going... Poco's up <laughs> in it, like we're just like oh they're over there and Poco's alone fuck them up so now here they're already down one we're already got the area like AKM's gonna be translocated out so now it's technically 6v4 you know we know where there are Crimzo's just rotating around Crimzo's probably one of the most vulnerable people but uh, they get split they use transcendence after they've already lost two and this is not gonna go well for them and you'll see in the next couple of fights that they continuously try and kind of like out-rotate a more mobile composition. Just pushing in. And we've still got mobility so we can choose to engage and disengage at our leisure. Yes, this is also where the wins meme happens. So here you can see AKM trying to scout behind, and here we're going to see France again. Uh, do they they try and ro out rotate us again? Don't they? So Ben Best gets hacked. We're just getting cleave here. Oh no! So this is like more along the lines of what you want to be doing, is trying to like push payload. But we had EMP again. There's Winds' barrier. Unfortunate. And they get cleaned up once more. I know you guys were waiting for that. Do you guys want to see that one again? Okay, I, I know you guys want to see that. I don't want to, like, beat a dead horse or anything, but you guys do, so. Uh, 
Honestly, agility's fucked up that engagement real bad. Unlucky. <clears throat> okay. So, it, I, 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 again, I'm only going off of memory of having watched this game once live under crazy high pressure, but I'm pretty sure France tries to out-rotate us here. Have you not seen that clip? What? No. Oh, show me why he was in the basement? He was in the basement because Agility uh, was fighting him on Doomfist. This, this, this was a, like, this was a comical 1v1 between wins and, uh, agilities. Oh, they're still in the basement. Holy moly. Where's agilities here? This was a pretty comical fight. Like, agilities shit the bed on this one. Yeah, he gets pushed into the basement by Agilities, and then Agilities can't kill him. Like, honestly, pretty embarrassing for the both of them, but that's why. He's... I... I don't want to be an asshole, Unko. Could have been hiding for EMP. We had EMP, right? Yeah, looked like he was hiding from EMP. Hiding from EMP, he got punched inside by agilities. Okay. No. Jody's punches into wall, uppercuts to escape, meteor strikes. What's XQC doing? Um, you guys EMP. We've got nano. This was honestly pretty messy from both teams here. And what's really kind of disappointing, I think, is this where we all get shattered? <laughs> Was this where it was? Like, our our perfect defense gets fucked up because we overextend on Ben Best, who has Shatter. Is this it? Pretty sure we all get fucked up here. Fucking rip, five-man Shatter. Unlucky, there goes our flawless defense. And now we lost, like, the best area of the map. This is like... Eichenwald second is a lot like... Or BlizzCon, Blizz, BlizzCon, Blizz World Second. Like one of the reasons that Blizzard World was our pick is because there's so much high ground on Blizzard World Second. It's such a clusterfuck of a map. Goats teams should not be able to cap second point against dive teams. It should not happen. What happened here? Did we just get snowballed? Okay, what is going on here? Let's look at this fight again. Hey, Beef Tipsy. How are you doing? Okay, so what do we do? Okay, so what are we looking for? They've only got Bomb and Coalescence. Agility's punches soon in. Oh, is this where soon gets away with, like, 1 HP? And we spend so much time trying to take him out? Agility's falls off. That's unlucky. God, fucking Brigidas, man. Yeah, we spent a lot of effort trying to kill Brigida. So ben Best is low, but Coalescence is going to keep him up. And then Poco Bombs. Honestly, some of Poco Bombs were really fucking weird. Even on Anubis, I was like, what are you doing, Poco? I know he's like really famous for bombs, but they did not show up in this series. No, it's going to bomb in order to try and get Mech back. 
Agilities is going to try and one-shot Unko through Coalescence, which is insanely hard to do. And I think he already used his punch, didn't he? Yeah, if he's going for the melee, he already used his punch. So. Unfortunately, Note doesn't get mech back. That sucks. Crimzo is hiding where? Crimzo, you sneaky son of a bitch. What great sight lines. That's huge, honestly. Coming in. Nice cleave. That's going to take up Ben Best. Killing Ben Best is going to convince XQC he can win. Unko still has Fade, or should have Fade, because Unko just came out of Coalescence. So, I should think he has Fade, right? Just came out of Coalescence that should have come back off cooldown. Gets knocked away. Super hard to juggle people inside. And there's the Fade, which should keep him alive. Banny and Surefor attempting to help XQC. Gets flanked by uh, Unko. Banny's like, nah, fuck you. Get out of here. XQC succeeds in feeding Alt Charge. Gets taken out by Poco. This will heal you. And now we kind of do a soft reset. Do we have EMP here? Oh, yeah. EMP plus Nano Doom. That is a bad day to be French. Was Unko hit by the EMP? I don't think he was. Nope, he was not. Okay. Poco suicides, and that's a French reset? Yeah, that's going to be a, set, a reset for France. And then they cap this one, right? How does France actually win this next fight? You shift the EMP? Dang, I got to watch that again then. Let's go back. Yeah. Whoop. Nice EMP, nerd. Nice, Unko. Nice. <laughs> You're like, nope, 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 I'm out, nope. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's huge. That's huge. France does get one more fight here, though. <laughs> oh, you guys want to see it again, but in full speed? Okay. I was like, fuck you, Crimson. Get off my dick. It's sad that that didn't, like, clutch. Yo, that's even more impressive in full speed. Holy shit. Throw the ball away so that Note can't... Uh, oh, man, that was so pog, Unko. Dude. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Fuck you, AKM. Get off the payload. <laughs> Someone get Unko in OWL? Yeah, someone. Let's do that. How do we fuck this up? Okay, let's take predictions. Let's look at the prediction time. How does this go wrong? Okay. I guess we can zoom in a little bit more. Okay. Let's take a look at this. So, we've got XQC and Crimzo on the high ground, and anytime I see Crimzo, I want to look for Banny. So, Banny is over here. Question mark? Why is Banny over here? That's interesting. So, we're already kind of, like, split. Because if, if I'm, like, the main people that I'm going to be looking for, Banny needs to be helping primarily XQC or Crimzo. So, this is, like, the first question mark. Agilities and Note are over here. Um, Agilities wants to be doing something with this doorway. So Agilities is trying to kill somebody into the pit. Sure for scouting, making sure their flanks. Don't really know, but like both Sombers are kind of just lurking. So they could, they have, uh, they have a lot of options here. And then France is going to be coming through all together and they have Barrier and Coalescence and they're rallying. So they're using triple support ultimates, which means that we... Don't have EMP. We have this, but that's not really going to do much. And they're going to be able to stun us and hack us if we come out of it. So a lot of fucking ults versus not very many ults. But uh, 
Okay, so the main thing I'm going to be looking at is agilities. Can you get anything into the pit? And Banny, what was your game plan? Is Banny also going for boops into the pit? Probably. This was scouted. Surefor was probably over here to start off and scouted this so that we know they're coming castle. Okay, I think that's it. Let's see if we're right. Should be a punch first. Boom. Gets Ben best. Nice. And then Banny amps speed in order to retreat. Winds drops the barrier to keep them in the fight. Agility's meteor strike, or his seismic misses and goes into meteor strike. What are you aiming for, Agility's? Hmm, gets nothing. Okay. I probably would have gone for Poco. Wouldn't I have gone for Poco there? Like, get Poco while he's remeching after the bomb? Hmm, seems like that would have been a better decision. Poco's bomb does get Crimzo. Where was Crimzo during that? Where was Crimzo to die to this? Oh. Fucking rip. Unfortunate. Okay, and there's Coalescence. This is now the third support ultimate they've used, and with us having lost Crimzo and having no ultimates, there's no way we're going to be able to sustain this. Okay. So, Crimzo should have been... In, and this is something that I was working on with Crimzo, is that especially against uh, um, dive teams, we wanted him a little bit farther back, kind of like playing more like Rockus does. Um, but... Uh, him getting taken out there is unfortunate, and we could have also probably punished Poco using the meteor strike. Anyway, moving into third now with just uh, just over a minute, just over a minute. Very nice from them. Actually, I'm gonna take that back. One of the things here is this is something that identified that China did pretty poorly as well, uh, at least in the scouting. But um, they were going to win this fight anyway, right? But they won kind of so fast that it gave us the ability to recontest. And it's something that, like, Elk talks about a lot, is that if you are guaranteed to win a fight, you want to win as slowly as possible in order to get the most amount of value possible out of that fight. Right? So, let's look at this fight again. Let's look at this fight again. Okay, so we're coming in. is just backing off. is just backing off here. You wanted to choke us in your old in your spawn? No, look at your ultimates. We wanted to win this fight and be able to uh, hold the choke in your spawn. I, I don't think you can hold the choke, though, against Dive, because we're going to be able to come out of their split and be fine. Like, if it was against Goats, Goats coming out through 3 could get stuffed pretty easily. But uh, I don't think it's very easy to stuff Dive into this spawn here. You were chasing somebody behind? Okay, let's look at this, though. Unko disagrees with me. There's Fire Strike here. if it was over there. Instead of helping Ben at the choke. But we were chasing someone behind instead of helping Ben at the choke. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you lost this because you wanted to go for the stuff, but you chased Churfor instead? So, okay, I see what you're seeing. So France's plan here to, was to win early in stuff, which makes sense. I can. That's a viable plan here. Now Ben... Fire strikes a railing, okay. And then tries to stuff here. So Ben's trying to stuff. Fighting XQC. I don't think that was the right choice, Unko. I'm going to stick with my guns. So, like, look how close the payload is. The payload's, like, what, five meters away? So if we look at this again... If we won later in the fight, Time to read. and like the risk of that is that, of course, you take the risk of the Canada ulting on you, which is a completely valid risk. I'll, I'll give you that one. But uh, I think it was too early. Ben was alone because we fucked up and we're chasing one. Like, because you were chasing Surefar. Surefar would have been the only one for you to chase, right?
Okay, there's the EMP. There's the hammer. You guys chase sure for? Is that what you're saying? Like, yeah, but <laughs> that, that, probably not optimal. I think that in this instance, it's probably give me Discord. I explain to you. Sure. Let's uh, let's call. Hey! <laughs> <How you doing? laughs> Hello. Wait, I'm gonna try to explain you because, like, like, as you know, my not that good. Yeah, that's fine. But, I uh, I gave share screen like, to so, you. So yeah, what what we wanted to do, maybe it's maybe it's bad. I don't know. But like, we knew you had a lot of ultimates. Yeah. So we wanted to win this fight to be able to to hold the choke point in the spawn, you know, because you were you were playing Reinhardt. Yes. But the thing is, like, so we use the MP. So I, I think. Ben Ben Des did a mistake when he used because it was not necessary. Oh, like the EMP, hammer uh, wasn't EMP. planned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Okay. I mean, I think even if if it was planned, like it's not what I it's not what I want to say. But but like we should use only MP on this situation. We keep both tanks, and yeah, we push the payload so we are able to like even if you have a lot of ultimates, you have to use your ultimates because you have to because we are holding the choke, you know. Yeah. But the thing is, like, on this situation, the last fight, I mean, the last fight we had to do, only Ben Best was holding the choke because we, I mean, we played bad. It was our mistakes. We were chasing or, or we were trying to kill Sure for. I don't know if you saw. Yeah, I did. Three of you chased. So, so, yeah, so you Ben, Best, and ben Best died. Yeah, so Ben Best died because he was alone at the choke. So, so was it like. Was it discussed that you wanted to kind of like EMP or stuff, or what was the decision making I mean, like the during this? The question is: the question is, what was the the best thing to do? Like, maybe not using ultimates for the fight um, before the fight. I don't know how to explain. Fuck. Mm -hmm. So, like, if I was looking at this, if it was a perfect world, and uh, um, like, if what was the status of like Brigitte's ultimates is that I would kind of want to go for more of like a turtle play where you force the opponent to come to you. Uh, like obviously chasing the Sombra one, not probably not the best idea, especially with as many people as you did, but you got split like Ben best moved up to stuff. And then you had three chase, uh, chase. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, our, it was our mistakes. Like mm -hmm. not Ben best. Like, I mean, it was the plan because we knew you had a lot of ultimates. I don't know if you saw, but the fight we used DMP and Shatter. Look at your ultimates. You had like five. Or yeah, four? we were coming up on four, yeah. I believe. Yeah, and it we was, should we be knew right that. about here. No, that was right after yeah. we died. That, that's why we use very fast our ultimates when you when we saw the the opportunity. Because I think the next fight we we would have lost. Like yeah, you have Anna, Anna EMP bit, and Diva. Yeah. So like this is the so this is like kind of the the crux of the disagreement I would suppose in this situation like ulting early is gonna uh, cause you to win it. Um, but, and you said it yourself, like we're coming up on four, that should be pretty easily tracked, but if you win this fight too early, you're not going to get as much value out of it. And like, so I can see what you're saying is that you're wanting to win this fight early in order to stuff, uh, right in the choke, but you fucked up part two of this kind of the yeah. plan. But the way that I would have approached this is to try and hold on to our win condition as long as possible in order to get more distance on the payload go for the wipe, preferably like just barely engaging first and then pushing and preventing that second fight from happening at all. So we kind of like looked at it two different ways and your way would have worked if you had executed it correctly. I mean, I don't know if it would have worked. I think no matter what, I think you will win the fight because you, I mean, you come back from, from your spawn with four ultimates. So I think we have, we what we had, uh, Fuck. What we had at the last fight, mm -hmm. us. I mean, what was our ult? Like, what do we add? Like, can you? I don't know. I don't see on your stream. But... Uh, I have it uh, shared on your uh, Discord. You... I shared screen. Wait. Oh fuck! I was not. <laughs> <laughs> like, can you play? Can you play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the EMP for Monko. Okay. So yeah, just. I mean, EMP was enough. 
Oui, oh, chaleur, it's bad. It's the last fight I want. I mean, the next fight I want to see. Okay, the, the fight, like the retake fight. Yeah, yeah, so the retake fight. this is where, where Ben Best has moved up really close to the choke like you'd talked about. And I honestly don't think even if you were kind of with Ben Best here, even if you had been stuffing with Ben Best right here, we kill him off of EMP. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I agree. I think no matter what, you win the fight. But what we wanted, it was using the position to to be, I mean, able... I mean, maybe we could win the fight because of the position, because we are holding the choke and you have to use abilities. I mean, you have to use ultimates if you want to pass the choke. But in this situation, Ben Best was alone, so you didn't have to, to use a lot of ultimates, I think. I don't know if you know what I mean. I do, yeah. No, it makes sense. I mean, if, you, if we wanted to, to win this fight, we didn't have choice to just hold the choke and try to, to force you to use to use your, I don't know how we say it in English, but just ultimates. I don't know. Soon's pretty dead here. Yeah. Boom. And we do use all four of our ultimates that we had, we even nano sure for at the end of it. Not so sure, not sure I agree with that retake. Your, your point was you wanted us to like keep our ultimates and like just wait uh, uh, a six v a six v six six v six and use ultimate. No. Yeah. So I just wanted the uh, like you were going to win the fight, and the thing that I wanted to have happen differently was right when you go here, like you have a really good combo that is basically unblockable. Um, the only thing that stops your combo from being successful here is if we EMP first. That's like the only thing that defeats you here. You have yeah, like, yeah, but a really you solid win condition. You, you, we know you have beat. But you know, like... that, you know that Banny's right here. So like your, uh, your uh, Sombra yeah, can, right. can scout you're Banny right. and make sure that yeah. he gets hit by it. So they have the option, like, even if they kind of try and, if we try and initiate with, which, with barrier, which we wouldn't do knowing you have EMP, it forces you to, like, play defensive with Banny. And if you're playing defensive with Banny, then you know that Canada's not going to take the initiative. So my saying here is you want to hold out on winning for as long as possible because the payload itself was, like, you know, three or four meters away from being full capped. So if you had waited for three or four more meters on this payload before actually winning this fight, then the second fight, the fight that you were worried about with the four ultimates, wouldn't have occurred in the first place. Because you would have won as we were respawning after you killed us all. So it's, it's like neither of I don't think either of us are wrong. I think it's just two different ways yeah, of thinking uh, yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah, the fight. Agree. Yeah. We'll see. Let's let's see what chat thinks. Let's see what chat thinks. Let's see if chat agrees uh, with you or chat agrees with me. Uh, I mean, it's not like I don't want to argue about that. I think no, like, please, it's, like I think it's, both I've... both are okay. It depends of what. Yeah, I don't know. I don't... Okay, chat. I don't know. Good question. It's pretty split. <laughs> it's, it's pretty split. Well, I didn't see that on the stream. You, <laughs> you make voting the chat. Yeah, you can see the vote. <laughs> Holy shit, that's pretty even. I didn't see. Look at that. <laughs> Fucking what? <laughs> it just goes to show you how there's two. Like there can all. There's never ever just like one right answer. Yeah, yeah, to be honest, even me, I don't know if I'm right. Uh, I just want to know the right answer because, yeah, on this situation, I don't know if uh, if, if the best is, is to hold the choke. I don't know. Is Arrow online? <laughs> I always Get uh... put on this one. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't know. Arrow, we need help. Where are you? It's a good question. <laughs> He's here? Oh, he's here. He's here. Arrow, join the call, please. No! <laughs> no! Not the head coach. Dad! Dad! <laughs> oh, man. All right, guys. My mom is joining Discord, too. Oh. Oh, Arrow's fixing his mic, then he's going to get on. We're going to get to the bottom of this question. Uh, We're going to get to the bottom of this I'm question. I'm pretty sure you don't know. You don't know. Oh, man. Chat is, 
This is crazy. It's 303 votes for your strategy, 301 <laughs> votes for my strategy. <laughs> they are voting, they don't even know. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Hold on. Let's get uh I gotta tab back in. I accept the friend request on Discord, Unko? Yeah, I did it. I did it. Okay. Let's get Arrow in here. Let's see what uh Arrow, I can't even Arrow's I can't gonna even shut me down so hard. <laughs> How you doing? Oh! How you doing, Arrow? Hey. <laughs> we got you. I'm just gonna turn you up, give me a second. Chat say hi to Arrow. Are you there? Yeah. Okay, he's here. Vote Perfect. one. Vote one. <laughs> so, you, did you see the kind of like setup to this discussion? Oh. Okay. Did I crash? Give me a second, chat. Technical issues. I am back. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. We. Oh. We. We. Okay, I'm just, uh, my graphics card apparently decided to shit itself, so I'm just loading back in. Initiating match. Okay, where was this? This was... Okay, I got to the, uh, I got to the spot. <laughs> what? You're voting one. You're voting one! Don't vote for yourself. Now I gotta vote for myself. Vote two! Vote two! Vote two! <laughs> okay, let me see if I can get... Uh... Okay, screen, yeah, I'm doing screen, a screen, giveaway plus screen share should be uh, working again there. Okay, let's get back into this. Arrow! Okay. So you can see the screen? Uh-huh. So... Uh, do you want me to like play it again, or how do you want to? How do you want to do this? I haven't. I I literally turned on your stream right when you said, "Where's Arrow?" Okay. So I have no idea what the context. So here's the context. I'm gonna play it in like quarter speed here, and the fact that we're talking about the last fight from France. France is going into the final point here. Canada has four ultimates coming up online. Now, I criticized France for uh, initiating too early with their ultimates, which allowed Canada's retake. Unko said that the plan was correct, but they fucked up in the second fight because the reason that they attacked so early was that they wanted to kind of stuff uh, Canada into our spawns. The reason that they messed that up is because three of them chased Surefor and didn't support Benbest, which allowed Canada to retake. So okay. you don't have to agree with either of us, but... Uh, I, I mean, I, I think the question is like... The question I was like, we... What... What what we should do if we want to win both sides, like yeah. So I'll I will uh, I will play it in uh, really slow speed for you, and you can kind of just we my, you let me know where you need me to kind of move the camera in order to figure it out. But I'll kind of like just talk about from our understanding of it so far. Um, so right now France just took second point and we're moving to third point here. So France has EMP and Shatter, and Canada's coming up with EMP, Nano, Bomb, and Barrier. Now, AM, our AKM's going to get behind them, or get behind Canada, in order to set up this EMP to try and, you know, help the snowball and win this first fight really early. I'll just move it forward a little bit. Now, here we're starting to move up. And AKM is going to go for this EMP, and Ben Best is going to shatter. We're both in agreement that shatter is overkill here, but this causes France to win this fight. One of my points here is that I think this fight happened too early, and that they could have kind of drawn this out to get more distance on the payload. Now, after this, Ben Best immediately is moving up to the left doorway to try and stuff Canada into our spawns so they can't recontest, or we have to 
um, ult in order to get out of spawn. But while Benbest is moving up to try and stuff into the spawn, Shorefor is behind, and for some reason, Unko, Poco, and Soon all try and chase Shurfor, who translocates away. With the three of them chasing after Shurfor, that doesn't give Ben Best enough support at the choke, and it's going to cause him to get deleted. Okay, real quick. Benji, did you know that they had EMP? Yeah, like, we... we that's why we used Ultimate early, because we knew they had four ultimates. I mean, we knew. They didn't have it. It was like 85%, but... Yeah, for us, they had four ultimates. Okay. But chasing chasing the, the Sandra, no matter what, it, it's a mistake. Like, it was our mistake to chase the Sandra. The, the, the plan was to hold the choke. I mean, after the fight, after winning the fight before, the plan was to hold the choke with Ben Best, the spawn choke, and try, and try to win the fight even if we don't have enough ultimate. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. And do you think it's good or not? Um, hmm. Okay, so the first thing is that definitely should not have chased unless you were in position to get a hacker a stun on sure for that is like a, a very very big misplay very big if you especially if your plan is to hold the choke like we should be holding choke regardless whether or not you take an early fight or a later fight um in general i i like i think you did engage a little too early however i think it's better to engage early and catch them off guard in order to get that like be able to set up for the next fight than it is to you know, try to get the perfect fight, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, like, in the moment, um, given the information you have, I would say, um, you know, take the aggressive early fight, catch them before they're fully set up, and then push and try to take take position for the next fight. Fair enough. I won, Jane. You did. You did. <laughs> I, will, I will concede defeat. And this is actually, like, thinking about the match with China, for example, a lot of my strategies as a coach... Um, come into like playing almost reactively and trying to counter. But one of the things that USA like really did extremely well, and then China did well during our matches uh, match also, um, was kind of instead of being reactive or trying to look for these perfect opportunities, being aggressive, taking the initiative, and like catching people off guard before they can set up for any of their plans. So, I will I will concede defeat. You are correct, on Uncle. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I don't know. that's good. We have found the correct answer, though. That's all that matters. No, but yeah, if we took the fight early, it was because we yeah we knew they had the MP, so he was at ninety percent. But for us, he had the MP, so we we took the fight early. You know what I mean? Yep, absolutely. I w I want to clarify that I don't think it would be wrong to wait and take a better fight either, mm -hmm. though, Jay. Like, yeah, you know, but in terms of like practical either. situations, you know, especially mm -hmm. if you're under pressure, it's going to be a lot easier. Uh, to implement Uncos. Yeah. Oh yeah, ch chasing chasing Shurfo was the worst the worst idea we had. Holy shit! Do you know? <laughs> do you remember what the call was for you to have yeah, actually yeah, chased Shurfo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The call was to hold the choke, and I don't know for some reason why. I mean, I was the only one chasing him, and like everyone came to kill him, but he just recalled, and Ben Best was alone uh, holding the choke, and he died. So yeah, we it was a big misplay from us. Unfortunate. Cool. Yeah, it was really bad. Well, thanks for uh, jumping on, Unko. I always, uh, always enjoy it when people... Problem, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy these where people kind of like challenge my assumptions and then we have to figure out what the real answer is there. And thank Jade, you, why, Arrow, as why, well. Why did, why did USA lose so bad? Uh, I'm waiting for That's a, a USA... I'm, I'm <laughs> waiting for a USA-UK analysis stream from uh, Arrow, which mm. I heard was happening this afternoon. Oh, yes. When are you going live with that? Yeah, I'm going to do it. Here in a bit. Do you know what time? Uh, probably around two. Around two. Yeah. Uh, Pacific. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that should be good. So I'll kind of finish yeah. watching uh, Eichenwald and Anubis, and then pass it over to you, so you can do USA cool. UK. Cool. Sounds good. Thanks to the both of you. I'm gonna go back Thanks, to chat. reviewing this game. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. Well, I love my team. Arrow and Unko are just two fantastic guys. Uh, it's such a pleasure working with the both of them. And uh, I hope that also kind of demonstrates to you guys like why I'm so excited to work with the Dallas Fuel as an assistant coach. Like I, I'm not perfect. I'm not the best coach in the world by far. But I have a lot to learn. And I like to think I have a lot to contribute as well. So anyway, they get uh, full hold here. So I'm just so excited to work with the Dallas Fuel and whatnot. 
And, you know, it's not your job to know the answer. It's your job to find the answer. Okay, let's go into the next point. How you doing, Plinky? I didn't see you. Uh-uh. Okay. So our attack here on like our general our general strategy for taking really difficult first points is um like for if we're doing first point of hybrid, I can well be a hybrid, or the first point of assault, our go-to strategy is to make sure that we're playing the combination of Ana, um, Genji, and Sombra. So we also want to make sure that like our main goal for this is to build ultimates and make sure that we have EMP, Nano, and uh, Blade available prior to the two minute mark. So we have 120 seconds in order for us to build an EMP Nano Blade. Now the support that Banny plays in this uh, combination we usually want to start um, with Zenyatta because that's a really, really greedy composition. You get discords, you get a really nice ultimate, you get you know higher damage uh, coming out from Zenyatta's than you do from Lucio's. And if nobody's like really pressuring Crimzo and Banny together, Zenyatta and Ana is the better call. If it turns out that the opponents are playing something like an aggressive dive defense, or they're playing in an area where we can't stash Banny and Crimzo somewhere, and they have to play on the low ground and can get sped onto, then Banny should very early uh, recognize this and swap onto Lucio. If you do look at like the Blizzard World attack from Canada against China, you'll realize that this was one of the many errors that came out during that fight that caused Canada's strategy to fall apart. But this is like just our generic strategy uh, for first point hybrids and assaults. So here, France is hiding. Really, all they want to do here is get one pick. And one of the like the main things here is that goats bleeds ult charge really badly. So if they can kind of even up the ult charge game by getting an early pick, it's really strong. Banny, however, is really on the ball here. And the boop to like move Reinhardt, Ben Best, and Soon away from Note and then speed Note out is actually going to keep his mech. And this is also going to be kind of exacerbated, I get to use that word, by Surefor being on the point and forcing objective pressure. This is going to cause France to not only split, they have to retreat, give up the fight, they didn't get much old charge as well, and now this gives Canada opportunities to farm while France is forced to retreat and trying to prevent giving up a tick on this point. Okay, so I think XUC, does he get punished here? But really, like, all of our, our like, all of our goals here right now is to only punish people who are like very, very obviously fuck up. Other than that, all we want to do is be building ult charge as quickly as we can. So like Crimzo, 40, 20 seconds into the game, Crimzo is already at 40% to his nano, right? Agilities hasn't been going for backline targets. He's just been farming tanks as much as he can. He's coming up on 30%. So this is like the main objective on this initial fight. So, we're going back, are we? What are we doing? XUC jumps back to the high ground. Agility decides he doesn't want the blade. He's gonna go for the uh, uh, Doomfist because they're playing Moira Goats. It's a lot easier for uh, Doomfist to punish Moira Goats. XQC gets punished, Agility is punching in. It's punished. Still, at this point, like, anytime at these point in times, it's also really amusing for us to be uh, like <laughs> listening to commentators, you're like, oh, Canada should swap it up. And like, we're playing a slow game. We don't really mind. Our ultimates are coming online. We're not trying to win first fight. Like anytime we win first fight with a composition like uh, Genji Somber or something, usually means that the opponents fucked up pretty badly. So we do have Nano here. So we have more opportunities, but they have Coalescence. We'll have to see how this actually works out. More fucking birds. What's going on here? Okay, so again, Surefor is pressuring point. He has to translocate out, but he got some good percentage there. So our Crimzo has already hit Nano. He doesn't have to save that for Agilities anymore because Agilities has swapped off of the Genji onto the Doomfist here. Ben, Best, and AKM are both low. 
note, and next you see just doing a fantastic job of pressuring, and now Unko's been forced to use Coalescence. Looks like we're pressuring Agilities out. This is all still very fine for Canada. We don't overly mind. We still have our ultimates. XQC is still cleaving. He's getting his primal. And Graviton misses all. And that sucks. So, that's a pretty big tool. It's not, like, the strongest of tools. Um, you know, and the, the, the Graviton going against a split composition like this, if you can hit one or two, you know, that's uh, probably about as best as you can ask for. You're not going to get, like, massive four, five, six-man grabs. France chases, and they punish. You know, they're doing a really good job here in terms of getting as much value as they can out of their defenses. But here, if you guys remember, like, I hope we're, you, my, there's times in which I care about the micro plays and times in which I don't. And here, Canada is playing the macro game. We're playing the big picture game. And remember what I said the goals were? The goals were to get a full suite of ultimates prior to the two-minute mark. And look at our alt stash. <laughs> like, come on. So even if we fuck this up, we can do it again. So. And doing this on... Um, so doing this on assault maps is actually even stronger because if you bank ultimates like this and then say in the fight where you were going to ult, somebody fucks up and you kill them and then just like clean up everybody else without using your ultimate, you have a huge stash of ultimates going into the second point of assault or escort. So usually when you do this sort of strategy where you play safe, you build, you may not get like the first, um, you know, the first fight win or anything, but then clearing chokes like this one on Eichenwald, like this is one of the b most brutal pseudo chokes in the game, this arch right here. And if we go into this arch with like three or four ultimates from not having needed them to take the first point, it makes it even easier uh, to keep up that momentum. Look how bad you are chasing sure four again. Yeah. So, Ben Best Land's a nice shatter. Was there follow-up on this one? I'm not, I don't remember there being follow-up. Yeah, Agility punches him away. Banny boops him away. Banny's boops have been just cr like Banny's Lucio play during this map was fucking crazy. Unko fades away, and we're gonna counter push here. EMP bomb and Nano. Everybody's dead. All my friends are dead. So, a little bit of an overextension from France. Wouldn't have been if the the follow-up on the hammer had been there. But now we're just kind of ulting with Reckless Abandon and going to clean up. So, punches AKM into a wall while nanoed. And then I believe XQC Primal soon into a corner here. Meteor strike. So there's not a lot of finesse to this strategy. Look at just how much shit is in this room. Oh, God, I love this client. It's so much fun. But uh, So there's not a lot of finesse to this strategy. It's kind of like a general purpose wrecking, like a battering ram or something like that. And these are the kind of strategies that you're going to see at the World Cup level. When you have 19 maps or whatever the fuck it is that you have to prepare for, you know, your strategies are not going to be precise, exact to the level that we saw things like New York creating strategies on Horizon Lunar Colony. These are the kind of like generic strategies that you practice and refine so that players are used to it and they're okay and they're comfortable with having lost three fights in a row because they know that they're playing the long con. They don't get impatient and they use EMP and nano one at a time or anything like that. So here we go. Plan worked out. We played the, you know, the big picture game, banked ultimates and just fucking deleted them. And the opportune time to use that was during a counter push after an overextension from France. Okay, and then we'll move into second. I have not reviewed South Korea yet. I don't know why I'm still in like 25% speed, but hey. Okay, coming along here. Now this is pretty good here. Like we're gonna be able to get high ground. They're still playing Moira Goats. They use their rally. And remember what I was talking about, how one of the benefits of here is that they're, we should be able to break this. Unfortunately, we had to use all of our ultimates, which means that France correctly identified that this area, this choke, is probably the best place for us to actually hold this. And it's, it's, it's really, really annoying, but France played this extremely well to hold us here because it burns so much time. And they even caught us before 
this gate moves up because this gate moving up, I believe it's 15 seconds that the payload has to sit still. So even if they get, get wiped here, this is a 15 second unavoidable time sink that Canada still has to sit through during France's respawns and they can't get the payload moving during that time. There's no real high ground for Canada to, to retreat to. So we're gonna have to try and just cleave for ults and then just blow them up again. They use grav, we eat it. And let's see how the rest of this fight goes. We're going too fast. Really, really scrappy fight. Huge anti from Crimzo is going to be what finishes them up. Crimzo and purpled three, and they're all dead. And then, boom. We got to wait for this fucking door to go up. God damn it. And then the fucking payload finally starts moving. So. You ate the grav and our beat got hacked. Yeah, so again even more situations like any time that there was something where something really really lucky could happen it went in favor of canada like the frame perfect emps on busan you know like uh eating grabs hacking beats things like this like france got so unlucky so many times if they weren't so unlucky they probably would have made this uh, a four or five game series okay and this is uh, agility is trying to fight soon Okay, I got distracted. I don't actually know what's going on in this fight because I was talking to chat. Uh, let's go back. So we're pushing through. France is on Moira Goats, and we're kind of like on the payload. So we're going to want to have guys, like, we need somebody like Note uh, to be pushing the payload. In this case, we're going to have Banny and Crimzo on the payload until a fight breaks out. And then Banny and Crimzo usually want to kind of split and move to a different location. This was actually interesting in the fact that Banny and Crimzo didn't stay together here. Yes, yes, yes. Move, move, move. Go, go, go. So, like, right here, one of the things that we could do is that, like, uh, pause. So, Crimzo is here, and Banny is here, right? So, let's kind of do another one where we look at the top-down view of this. Go down. Go down. Right, so if we look at this, we've got uh, Sure 4 fighting wins. We've got Crimzo kind of hiding in this area. And then Ben Best is in the middle of... Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I closed Epic Pen. That sucks. But, uh, so Banny and Crimzo being split again. That's uh, not really the worst thing ever here, depending on Banny's actual goal. Um, and Agilities, where is Agilities? What is he doing? Oh, Agilities is just staging on the high ground. I thought he was like with Unko here on the same level, but he's above. So he's just looking for an engagement here. So this is more of like, um, this is more of Canada's style in that Canada doesn't really like really coordinated engages. We don't like aggressive dives. We don't like proactive dives. Not for lack of attempting to try them in practice. We're just not that kind of team. It doesn't work. The play styles of the people on our team do not match really coordinated aggressive dives. Um, yeah, I agree, Unko. I absolutely agree there. So, but here you can see Surefor and Unko, or sorry, Surefor and Winds are fighting each other. This is like classic Canada. And then you can see Agilities is looking for a target, and he's going to go in on soon? Time to read my classic Canada. Then you see XQC, who is doing his exact job. XQC's main job here um, was to isolate supports. So he's his like main assigned task was to isolate supports, not to kill them. Like if he can split them and break LOS, he doesn't really want to chase. And this is an example, like I talked about it early in the stream, but this is like an, a, an example of overplaying where doing this in this situation and then like chasing after the supports or whatnot, unless you're like absolutely guaranteed to kill them, or even if you are, sometimes it's not necessary for you to do so. So let's think about this specific situation right here. So if, if XQC chases Unko and wins, right? He might be able to kill them. But what happens if XQC, instead of chasing Unko and wins, just turns around and starts cleaving the rest of the French members. What exactly is Unko and Wins going to do about that? So this is a this is kind of one of the situations like this exact situation is a really really good example of things that even contenders main tanks kind of suck at is that you don't have to overplay 
chasing supports, and it may not be in this situation, but this sort of situation where nothing, there's nothing wrong with nothing, right? So Unco and Wins, if they want to get to the most direct path back to their team, they're going to have to go through XQC, but XQC's there. If XQC comes out of his bubble, then Unco and Wins are going to be able to deal more damage to him instead of XQC just kind of like removing this area. They could drop down here, but that would take more time. And in the meantime, XQC is getting even more value. And then he could stay on this high ground and again cleave the supports and draw their attention after they've done rotating. And if they rotate over here, well, then they're behind Canada's lines and are probably going to get fucked up. So this is just like a really good position from XQC to split. And let's see how actually he plays it. Does he chase or does he let them go? The wins is low. He'll pursue because that's a guaranteed kill. But if Ed Wins had been higher health, he would have just sat in his bubble, turned around, and just prevented, like, maintained the isolation, and while continuously getting value onto targets which no longer have the support because XQC has split them. Yeah, you played Goats and you were all split. Even on your attack, you tried to out-rotate us multiple times, which made very little sense. But, uh, like... So XQC getting in that location, dropping that bubble to isolate and split is this kind of like chaos is why I talk about Canada not being a coordinated team. I don't mean that we're we like don't play together in the fact that we're just like six solo queues, but the type of strategies that we employ are based off of individuals playing in certain ways that complement each other while doing different things, if that makes sense. Agility's tried to get the rocket punch jump and it didn't work out. But that's like a really good kind of case study about how you can play Winston and, you know, get value without getting kills or things like that. You saw Surefire for going for different targets. You saw Agility's going for different targets. You saw XQC isolating. Banny here probably should have been playing with Crimzo. But um, what was Banny's intent during this fight? That's still the, that's the one question mark I have. Okay, so where's Banny? Where's Banny? What were you doing? Okay, so you're here. Now, what do you do? You're with Crimzo, and I would have expected him to stay with Crimzo to help Crimzo reposition or defend himself against, like, the single diva. So instead, he speeds here. I actually don't understand what Dan Banny's doing here. I'll be honest. Oh, he returns. So he does return to Crimzo. And then he's just floating around, looking for opportunities. So this is, like, a good example of not... I don't, I don't understand why he was flying around over here in that point in time, I'd have to ask him. And he gets taken out. Hmm. I don't know. I'd have to ask him. So it's obvious that he had a plan and it changed because he returned. But I don't know what his initial plan was. Okay. Let's keep going. He wanted to boop Ryan, was that it? I don't know. If this was an actual like coaching session, I'd just be I'd just like send DM a banny. I would be like, you know, at like 43 seconds into the VOD, I'd just give him the link. I was like, what were your thought process? That's, that's when I'm actually reviewing VODs, I don't like to assume people's intentions unless it's like super obvious. So if I was actually kind of like coaching, I'd just like send Banny a message. I was like, well, what were you doing here? And he'd send me what his thought process was, or he'd be like, yeah, that was a mistake. I feel like I should have been doing this. I'd be like, yes, I agree with you. It was a mistake. I'm glad you recognize that. Here are some options for things that you could have done differently. And here are some ways that you could have recognized that that would have been the correct play. So whatnot. So send Banny a DM. Eh. He played really good in this map. I'm, it's, it's kind of unfortunate. There's like one thing that I was like, oh, because, oh man. They're like this map for Banny was one of the, his best maps. It was so impressive. Okay, let's keep going. And we have EMP here, don't we? Yeah, this is just a six-man EMP cleanup. Just fucking die. You're all dead. Probably didn't need the bomb. Definitely didn't need the bomb. But hey. Oh, four wins! <laughs> that is so unfortunate. <laughs> sure for hacked his rollerblades. Oh no. Sure for hacked his rollerblades. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So this is where things get really interesting. In the fact that 
XQC's right click was not working, and I was like, ah, shit. <laughs> so, like, it, I knew it was winnable, because we only need to get the payload to about here right, but we didn't want to be on Ryan as much as we can. Now, Eichenwald third point was, uh, is not a map that you can really get away with in this meta for playing Reinhardt. So we need to do Rhine, and we need to do Goats. And one of the other things here is that Agilities is in right now. And Agilities, we talked about it, but whenever we play Ghosts, we prefer to have Mangachu. Um, like, Agilities works really good on Brigida, but in terms of, like, Agilities Brigida style and Mangachu's Brigida style, Agilities is better in, like, Brig Comps with Dive or Brig Comps with McCree, but Mangachu has a lot larger, like, awareness in terms of playing... Brigida with goats. So Agility's aggression on goats with Brigida gets him punished too much. So here, like Agility's, and we have played Doomfist goats before, where we kind of keep Agility's on Doomfist instead of Brigida in the fact that if you are trying to do stun shatters, well, now you can just do punch shatters or uppercut shatters or things like that, and you can have a new combo for Graviton. So Agility's really struggled, and I think he swapped back and forth between Doomfist and Brigida trying to figure out what was going to work. So everyone on Canada here was, like, really uncertain, and it was super high pressure. If you had to play Winston here, how would you do it? Probably play Dive Goats, but at this point in time, we hadn't seen China play it, and we hadn't, like, learned how to play Dive or Winston Goats. Um, so we wouldn't have been able to at this point in time. Uh, yeah, so let's just watch. So we have Nano, they have Bomb. This is another one of Poco's questionable bombs. Sure4 tries to get, like, so, so Sure4 on the flank tries to make some space and he gets punished. It's fine. Tries to take some map control, I guess. Not make space, but take map control. And then we're just off on the side and... France is doing a really good job. France is one of the things they were really good at is like pushing forward through chokes to try and punish people who couldn't escape. There they tried to look for something but couldn't find anything. France here has a grab. We still have our nano. So we're probably going to nano agilities here, I can imagine. Agilities going into Unko or Wins is going to be a pretty big one shot. Well, there he is, just on time. So he goes for Wins. Does he get it? Ah. The sun from soon prevents him from finishing off wins. That is unfortunate. Like, go, going Doomfist into Moira Lucio is really strong because um, Agilities can just come in and basically delete those guys from the field. And it's pretty difficult for soon to be able to land those stuns on him. Meteor Agilities strike. goes in. Fun fact for you guys that you didn't actually... I'm not sure if you guys know that or not, but if Agilities uses Meteor Strike with one millisecond left on his nano boost. Nano boost duration pauses when you're in Meteor Strike. Not sure if you guys knew that. I'm just going to wait to see if people knew that. Watch this. Agility should come out of this nano boosted. So, uh, uh, boom. did he not come out of that nano boosted? I am unstoppable. Stunned. Did he go into it after? He goes into it nano boosted. Don't worry, my friends. I am your shield. I can't tell. I'd have to test that, because it would definitely used to be the case. I am personally It used to be one of the strong things. He had nano? Okay. I know it used to be like that, and we've been operating under the assumption that Nano Boost remained through Meteor Strike. So if it didn't, it's changed, and I was teaching Canada wrong things. Oh god. Now I'm double. I'm now I'm second guessing myself. I am 
over. So there's that. You guys are still going. We survive Grav. Agilis punches back in. Nano's at the very end of uh, Meteor Strike. Watch Banny. Risky. That oh, was risky. It worked! He hid from the Bash Shatter and then beat it, but that was pretty close timing. Again, super lucky things going in favor of Canada. Anyway. We get the payload a good distance on this push, but then get counterattacked by France. Ew. Yeah. France wins this one with just beat. Really? When we had Shatter? Oh, I remember what happened here. France played this fucking so well. XQC was pissed about this. Um, so, right? Remember how I talked about um, um, using agilities in place of Brigida in order to displace Reinhardt to land the Shatter? Look at how France blocked this. So, Agility should be coming in with the stun. Punch. And he goes for the uppercut. Down. Boop. So, AKM bubbles himself and best, and then soon hard shields it. So, XUC Shatter lands nothing. And he gets punished. Now, XUC's overextension after the Shatter was, I think, just a little bit of frustration that he went fired forward. He should have retreated, like, as soon as he missed the Shatter. But, uh... Yeah, the, the really, really sick block from uh, uh, AKM and soon uh, really threw us off because we had used two cooldowns from Doomfist into Benbest. And I just love... One of, the, one of the things that I really, really love about this play, really, really love about it, is the fact that AKM recognizes what's happening. So I want to... Like, AKM recognizes what's happening here. So he sees Agility's charge up the punch here. He knows it's coming, and you can see him immediately turn to try and land a projected. He sees that soon, he sees that soon is going to be able to block it himself. So he immediately goes to bubble the next person uh, who wouldn't be able to survive the shatter. So look at this. Punch, AKM goes, this is a shatter. He knows that he can save himself without looking, so he looks to save the second person. Gets the bubble onto Ben Best and goes back to fighting. So, AKM, big brain. But, uh, yeah, if there had been, like, a support next to him, anybody else next to them, they still would have been saved. Because it would have been the personal and the projected bubble uh, from AKM to save them against the Earth Shatter. Without that, without AKM there, being the heads-up play, Canada would have won right there then. Right then and right there. You can see him hesitate to bubble Brig, too. Absolutely. Here we go. This is where shit gets hairy. I know France has a ton of ultimates. On the, un on the downside, we will have to teach AKM how to grab. Because he uh, fucked those up quite a few times. Banny gets two. Bomb gets no one, because Ben best shields. All systems checked. Honestly, that was on our scouting report, too. Under, I, I wonder if I can go find our scouting report. Well, there was one line in our scouting report for France where it says AKM doesn't know how to grab. And I was like, oh, really? <laughs> Turned out to be true. So. <laughs> we'll work on it. Pass into the iris. Smart player. Smart player, though. Yeah, they counter push here with ultimates. They used two support ultimates and a graviton here, and we get pushed. And this becomes the last fight. Now, if we're talking about, like, how unlucky you can be, this final fight between Canada and France is just, like, the creme de la creme of unlucky for France. Um, France gets killed, I believe, three times by reinforcements. Like, Unko does something crazy big brain, but gets punished. And then it's just like one after a time of people getting punished by super unlucky things. Even though France goes up 
um, two kills. So they go 6v4 in this last fight. So watch how unfortunate this is for France. I think Agility dies first. So yeah. Benvis moves over here. Now, AKM's kind of like... This is where you can see kind of like controlling space. AKM wants to control this right side while Ben Best wants to control the left side of the pillar and stuff Canada into this hallway here. We're pushing out. AKM's bubble is going to be forced, which is going to cause AKM to have to give up space. And because Ben Best retreated so far, this is going to allow Canada to get in. Now, Agility's bashes forward, and then Banny goes for the beat here. Banny goes for the beat for the hard engage. And then Sure4, unfortunately, uses his projected bubble. Great coordinated slam from Ben Best and XQC is going to knock down almost everyone. Fortunately, he doesn't get Banny. France probably could have, like, waited um, for the barrier to wear down a little bit, but uh, the pin from Ben Best also connects onto Note. So Agility's is down, and Crims was down. But XQC stands and lands a five-man counter shatter because he survived long enough thanks to Banny's barrier. This is going to cause the fight to get evened up a little bit with soon dropping right away. Unko stands up and transcendences, but not fast enough to save soon. Now, Node is getting punished really hard here. He's playing a little bit split as France has landed the Discord onto XQC and try to punish him with transcendence. Surefor gets the bubble on him and now the counter grab comes in. Fortunately, Poco didn't eat them, but this is also going to do some really awesome things. Look at the two seconds left on the clock. That's going to split them from preventing the payload, which is going to allow Banny and Note to touch. XQ tr XQC tries to get greedy and get his next hammer by swinging into the grab, but he isn't able to get it. Good news, it leaves France low. Note, with the big brain play here, drops out of bomb to split them, and then this is where it gets super unlucky. Unko goes for the flank after Transcendence and gets killed by a respawning Agilities. Note's bomb allows him to kill Ben Best at 1 HP and continue the contest as Banny and Wins get into a 1v1. So the amount of shit that went wrong here for France when they had the advantage is unbelievable. And then Surefor farms Poco. <laughs> so, AKM's here, but now reinforcements are starting to come in. Now, if you want to see Unlucky Beyond Unlucky, look at this. Look at this. Soon is wanting to punch Banny into a wall, which is a guaranteed kill. Guaranteed kill. But Agility's uppercut... knocks Soon far enough vertically that he flies over Banny's head. And Banny survives. Unlucky number, number like 17 billion for France. And this also puts Soon out of position, which is going to get him killed. At this point, we now have Banny alive. And without him up here, if Banny had died to that, Crimson's coming back, but guess who is going to get the finishing blow onto soon? Another reinforcement. Coming back in. Mana boost onto Surefor. AKM does get grabbed. And it's also important to note that AKM started this fight at, I believe, 11% to his grab. So during this clusterfuck, AKM did manage to build 11, or sorry, like 90% of a Graviton. XQC's hammer, however, catching wins. Poco's going to be finished off, and then soon is going to be taken out in pretty short order. He's going to allow Canada to finish this map. There you go. Victory. Victory. And that was Eichenwald. The final match! Temple of Anubis. This fucking shit show of a map. <laughs> Initiating match. Uh, uh. Okay. So, you, like, you, you guys know our plan. I told you Canada's plan. If we're on attack, what we're going to do is we're going to be Sombra, we're going to be Genji, we're going to be Anno, Anna. We're going to farm Nanoblade, and then we're going to fuck them up in two minutes or less. That's Canada's plan. It's really not that complicated. It's really not that complicated. Um, on defense, we're going to be playing the, the Orissa defense. So the Orissa defense is Orissa and D.Va. And then for DPS, we're going to be going Widowmaker and Junkrat. 
Widowmaker, especially on Nubis, because it is such a Widowmaker-friendly map. A lot of high grounds, which are going to force people to try and contest the Widowmaker in one way or another. And if they go an attacking Widowmaker of their own, we have the Mercy, we have the uh, Diva, and we have the Orissa. And then the Junkrat is good for denying dive uh, compositions, areas where they can stage, as well as being really good against Ghosts if they decide to run this. Now, the one thing that we decided to uh, swap up here was the fact that our original plan was actually to play Banny on Ana, but uh, because France subbed in Nico for this game, uh, we actually decided to play Mercy instead because Nico coming in indicates to Team Canada here that France is likely to play Dive and not Goats. It's not that they're incompetent at playing Goats. Um, you know, Nico is a very good player and he's somebody who knows a lot about Goats, but his Genji is like the main reason why you would want to sub him in. So the last minute adjustment to our composition based on uh, France's substitution is to keep Banny on Mercy because if like singular targets get dove, but France expends a lot of resources in order to kill a single target and then we're able to punish based off of the over expenditure of resources, then we can after that fight res a target or you know if they put too much effort into a target and like just we can res a single target up if France over invests on one and has no follow up past that. Whereas Ana is really good for like longer contests against higher continuous damage and the anti-nade from high ground positions is one of the things that can trigger uh, like a, an all-in commit uh, onto a GOATS composition if they, for some crazy fucking reason, decide to attack first point Anubis with GOATS, which we have seen in the past. So anyway, let's, uh, let's see how it goes. Three, two, one. Attackers incoming. Defend objective A. Um, I assume because there's so many viewers, there's going to be some people who don't really like this composition on this has been like the meta on Anubis uh, for the longest period of time. So one of the things that is going to do is that this composition is like really good at holding this front choke. And then France is going to want to break this choke point somehow. You know, you can see that we've got the trap and the mine there, but uh, soon flings through, knows the shit's there, takes it out. And then Poco is just going to escort everybody through with the Defense Matrix. Now the Halt, yep, the Halt should be coming out from XQC in order to try and drag them out of the room. And with this happening, there should be a mine in the air. Where is Agility's? Oh, Agility's already moved over to the side. But Sure 4, so basically when you pull them out of this room, it should be in line of sight of Sure 4 to land a headshot as well as like a concussion mine from Agility's and a direct pipe should be incoming to that Halt. We didn't do it because Agility's has already kind of moved over. Now, Agilities gets over-aggressive here, if memory serves, and catches Ben Best in a trap, but tries to punish. do to do to do So, Agility is like, nah, fuck you. And what we're trying to do right now is, in order for France to be successful here, they need to kind of spread out around the map, get different angles, take map control away from us methodically, and then use that map control to execute a dive onto one specific target. Now, if we can prevent them from using this room to get out this window and behind us, then this is really, really strong. Because if they can use this window, they can avoid our kind of like frontline defense and get around to our Widowmaker. So we specifically want to avoid these wind windows from being used. And you can see Sure4 is already repositioned in order to put a little more damage on it. Agilities does get aggressive here. He's going to die. But you can see kind of how much effort France has put into this. Agilities is getting double pocketed here. Or is this... Does Agility survive this? That crazy bastard. No, he doesn't. Of course. I was going to say, that would be insane. But we traded soon for Agilities. Nico just had to use his dash to retreat. And then Unko and Winds are like split for the team. So this is why the Mercy is going to be a much, much better pick than the Ana. Is that the Ana wouldn't have been able to heal through barriers anyway. And now Banny can safely resurrect Agilities uh, on this box to be earlier to the next fight instead of maybe having Agilities down when France tries to take map control. It's not that we're worried about Agilities not being back in time for the next team fight. It's that we're worried about Agilities not being alive to prevent France from easily maneuvering through this main choke and then kind of like spreading around the map. Yeah, your, your, focus, your target focus in this fight was pretty poor. Don't mess with 
And we'll see different examples of this composition as we kind of watch through Anubis, right? So let's look at that was fight one. Let's look at fight two. He wasn't double pocketed at the start of the fight. It actually took us a while to get uh, Harmony on him, so Agility should have died. Absolutely. Unko is correct here. Nico's up on the wall. XQC is kind of rotated to make sure we can pressure the French tank so that they can't take many more map control. Ben misses over the top. Diving in from behind, trying to get a split here. So we drop three ultimates. Probably overkill here. The tire is going to go through and kill two if memory serves. Yep. Let's do that fight again. What was... So Ben Best's rotation here is what decides to trigger the engage, right? So Ben Best tries to kind of um, pincer. Now Poco is at the front and Nico is there too. They're both pretty low. What is the plan here? Nico dashes through onto who? Was it agilities again that they were trying to go through? So Nico hears Ben Best's call for agilities and goes for it. Nico gets halted away from Banny and Crimzo. So his reflect is not useful. Note gets DMAX, which is going to cause the bomb. We use... Okay, so the initial engage was just scuffed, and then we use ultimates to win. More ultimates than we should have, definitely. Because in, like, in a sustained fight, our composition, Canada's composition, wins without ultimates, and we shouldn't have needed, like, in this composition, you want to use ultimates to gain the advantage, not to kind of just clean up. So, uh, the bomb was fine, because Note needed mech, but Banny, did he need Valkyrie? Did Banny need Valkyrie here? No, he did not. Poco killed Note? Really? Oh, he was Nano. Okay, fuck off, Poco. Oh! Jokes, we've got res! Fuck you! Lol, nice effort. Now show them. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so we get uh, walls. This There's like a lot of different like corners that uh, Surefor can kind of peek through. And this is... Uh, so one of the things here is with... Um, with Soon being around back here, Soon's only, like, Surefor should know that Soon's only option when he's back here is to go here, and then you jump here, and then you walk up this slant here, and then you jump here, and then you walk up to the top, and then you can single blink atop to the high ground. That's the only jump that Soon can make to kind of get up onto this high ground. Yeah, so you can walk up these green slanted objects, stand on top of the dome, and blink across to where the widows are. So we know, and Surefor knows, that he's just going to play over there. And now Soon has effectively... Is he going to do it? Are you going to do the dome walk? Do the dome walk. Do the dome walk. Do something. Do the dome walk. Bob, do something. Do it. Get on top. Don't be a little bitch. Do it. Oh, he's waiting for Nico to stage. Okay. But this doesn't really matter. Like, because we know that this jump is there. I fucking called it, chat. I'm a god. Anyway. Uh <laughs> So we know that by soon being over there, it immediately, like, little things like this. So if, if you know that soon is in this position, if you know soon is in this position, it, this is an action that telegraphs. It telegraphs what France's plan is, 
And Sherfor knows that. He's called it. He's positioned appropriately. And we can just be like, meh, fuck those guys. And effectively take a 6v4 because Asun and Nico have essentially isolated themselves. So anyway, like, I just wanted to point out how sites identifying Soon's location, knowing the map and the abilities and, like, the capabilities of that hero in that location, telegraphs intention, allows us to position in a way to defeat the rest of France. So, here you are. Sherfar goes back over. Oh, I rewound quite a bit, did I? Yeah, there's identifying the tracer right there. So while we know this is happening, let's see what's happening. We can see... Are we going to be much more aggressive? Like, we know we're not afraid, because they don't have DPS with them. Or they don't have their tracer with them. That's going to back off. Nico's going to try and flank through that window. We could have been much more aggressive here. We could have gotten agilities and XQC, like, right into this room. There's halt. There's a lot of damage. That's going to blow cooldowns. They're moving in, they're jumping in right after the kind of stage finished, but. Cease your resistance. It didn't finish Poco. Nico finished up the supercharger. Anti comes out. Note got demacked. Doesn't finish off. Oh no, note's gonna Oh, note got back in. Okay. Wow, that was chaotic. That was way more chaotic than it should have been. Okay. Get him! Get him! Oh, the halt broke! That sucks. Okay. So, last fight. So, this goes from almost a full hold into, like, a 5 a five to 4 Anubis point, which is ridiculous. The fact that we have Tire, like, they have Nanoblade. They have Barrier. There's a lot of options that they have, but it's their last fight, so this is a ton of pressure on them. They're moving in. So, this time, instead of sending soon far right side, they're sending soon this side. We've got a, a Venomine, though, which is really good. And sure for again... Like, tracking the location of the flankers. So good. So good. Banny's going in. Banny's in trouble here. Crimson doesn't have a harmony on Banny until pretty late. I don't think Banny can survive that. Now, Crimson... I, I remember this now. Yeah, Crimson's trance. How did we not win this fight? Ben Best goes for agilities while he's in Tyre, and Tyre gets nothing. Poco gets demacked. Banny can't res agilities, because that's a dangerous area. And he's flying over Eugene towards Grimzo. Oh, Blade to finish. So we had to use Blade early on in order to keep Banny alive, which freed Nico to use Blade to clean. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. That's too bad. If we had won that fight, we would have just shut them out on Anubis. If we had done that, though, France would have looked, like, really bad when they were, like, actually a pretty decent team. Like, they made some mistakes here and there, but they're a decent team. It would have been unfortunate to shut them out on Anubis. And they're going for a goat swap? Motherfuckers. Don't even want to take that first fight. Because they had to use it. Like, this is the situation in which you would have... Um... This fight was important? The last one? <laughs> oh my god, I'm scrolling. I'm reading Unko's posts. Okay, what do you want, Unko? Are you going to call me again? There's a lot to say. Okay. Let's get France's perspective on the matter. Uh, Hello again, <laughs> Unko. Hello. I will go back because you have more to say about this. I have to check on this call. Uh, yeah, I'll do screen share again. Let me go back to the start of this last fight here. Yeah. Okay. Let me get the share screen up for you. Think. Okay, there you are. Okay. Um, so 55 seconds. This is like right okay, at the very so start yeah. of the fight. 
Okay, so if we can see like uh, the the ultimates. Yeah. So the plan for us, we knew you had trends. Yep. So it was to nano monkey and to force the trends and to nano blade after. You know what I mean? Wait, what? But you don't have like the plan. The plan was to nano monkey. Yeah. The monkey nanoed is gonna is gonna force your gonna force your your trends and after we blade. Yes. You said you, said, is, you said nano blade after. No, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. And this is was the plan. But I think. You could win this uh, this fight. I think we I could think have as well. The, yeah. the, the Crimson position is really bad, I think. I agree. He should he should play far back on top. Oh, he went to the wrong Because place. we we don't have to use a lot of uh, abilities to get on him. Uh, get on him. I yeah, like anytime, like I was talking play, yeah. about it earlier on, but anytime that you recognize that the opponent has something like Nanoblade or EMP Blade or anything like that, you want your supports basically in Narnia and make it super hard for anybody to get on top of them at all. But Crimson was pretty far forward here. So there's the nano onto Ben Best, and Ben Best is going to be jumping on to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was really bad. <laughs> Banny. On mercy. Okay, so Banny gets oh, away we, there. We played so bad. Oh. Because I think in general, Nico, Nico is flanking, like behind, you know? Like yeah. in the window, you. He did you previously, show. he didn't do it for this fight. Yeah, here. yeah. But it could be like very strong if he was doing this this fight because the crimson position was not really good, I think. So he could be just behind the Zen. Nah, I don't know. <gasps> oh, I'm gonna cry. So what happened in like the the later half of this fight? Well, I think you could easily win this fight, honestly. Wait. How so? Well, if Crimson, if Crimson so you and the... Wins just survived the tire, and you survived at like one HP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are lucky. Okay, so soon is on Tracer on the high ground. Looks like he's what? wanting to chase after Banny, and Nico's there as well. So you've got two flankers on Mercy. Ben Best just finished off killing Agilities, who was in Rip Tire. So Agilities fed, um, or got punished rather. And then we but got... the thing is, like, super sad is like, like, can you go back a bit? Like, like I said, the plan was to. Nano monkey and focus the Zen and force the trends, but I nano monkey and we focus mercy instead of Zen, so he didn't use trends. Uh, he still instantly. had to use it to yeah. save Banny though. So like yeah, but I operation think, success, I, I guess. I don't know. Like, but Banny didn't die. He was like one HP, you know. He was very when, low. When he, was, he was very low. Yes. Where was uh, Soon? Did Soon join this dive? Oh, Soon was being zoned up by Sure yeah, Force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why Crimson didn't have the harmony on Banny earlier, is he was making sure that Sure Force had it for the 1v1 with Soon. So the thing who made me sad, it's like, we have a plan. I'm talking about us, right? Yeah. Not you. Like, we have a plan and we are not doing what we said. Pass into the iris. Pass into the iris. This tire was unlucky. How low were you when you survived this tire? One HP. <laughs> eight. Uh, eight. <laughs> GG. Pretty good. There's Ben Best finishing off agilities. Now, what happens to Boko? Does he survive this? Oh, Note's gonna boost at him and kill him, right? Uh. There's no way Ben Best saves him. Did Note miss the melee? Still gets him though. Nice. Okay. And then here at this time the blade is happening on the supports. Yeah, I mean we we can't lose this fight. Even I mean we did a lot of mistakes on this fight, but we still won the fight because we have a lot of ultimates. And you two have been kind of. Uncontested okay. there, got back on the box, healed back up. I mean, we got lucky to be honest. Yeah, there's like you've like, been getting unlucky yeah, yeah. the entire series so far. Yeah. It was about time that you got lucky, right? Yeah. I mean. And then you swap. Sometimes I, I mean, sometimes I, I can't say we were lucky. Like sometimes we could do better, and well, everyone could do better, right? Things shouldn't happen. Nobody will ever play the for the perfect game of Overwatch. Now, if you had kept your ultimates, I assume you would have stayed on for one or two fights before swapping to goats, and you just did this immediate swap because you had to ult to win. Wait, now? Yeah, Sorry. right now on the screen. 
you're, uh, you're going to cap, but you had to use all of your ultimates. So you're just going to immediately hot swap goats. Uh, okay. To be honest, to be honest, we switched we switched to goat because we are not really good at dive. Fair. And uh, and we are far from our ultimates, so yeah, we we switched to goats. It is hard to defend. This is but also where uh, Surefor starts playing. Was it this one that Surefor starts playing Mystery Heroes on? I don't remember. I think it was okay. this map. I don't know why I'm still look, in super slow motion. Look, look what we are going to do. Because maybe you wait and you will switch your character, but you won't have time because look, we, we switch all at the same time and we speed boost to main. I believe we have guys in spawn though. It's not like we're falling for Yeah, this, but right? he's going to be late. He's going to be late and we will be on point before he came. Yeah, we would practiced staying in spawns for counter swaps, so I'm surprised they didn't do it here. It should be on a Zen, probably. Because or Lucio yeah, we, on a... We, or, we oh, old that was agilities. Right, agilities. I thought I was looking at Grimza there. Or are we not going to get an Ana? Oh, boy, did we fuck this up. Look, we have the position. We are on point, and they are coming from Spoon. Sure, four's on uh, Hammond, which was... I'll be honest, Hammond was never a planned swap. Wait, you have Rain and Hammond? Yeah, uh, Hammond was not a planned swap. Sure, far improvised here. Okay. So we've we fucked up here real bad. We fucked up. Um, we're on Lucio Zen against this, which is not. I think you got panicked. You got panicked because we all switch at the same time and speed boost to main, and you didn't have time to adapt. I think. Like no? we're we're on a, we're on a trash comp, right? So we fucked up our support swaps, and Sure, far ended up on Hammond, right? Like, yeah. we, look, look, our tanks are Diva, Hammond, and Reinhardt here, and our support line is Lucio Zen. We don't even have a Brigida. So, yeah. This was very, very, very poorly played. I didn't realize Wait, how bad this against, was. Against our comp, you, you will play Brigida? No, I was just saying, in terms of, like, we would oh, not. Sorry. I would definitely want a Lucio. Um, whether we're doing Lucio Zen or Lucio Ana. Lucio Ana. Yeah. Or sorry, uh, Lucio Ana or Zen Ana. Lucio Ana, Sombra, Sombra Doomfist. Yeah. yeah, you would definitely want the Doomfist. Like, the Doomfist was a planned swap. but uh, I think he switched to Amon because he knew it was late, right? Could be. I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. But uh, we do manage, like... Wait, Agility killed three? Ag Agility's <laughs> killed three. Let's watch that again from Agility's perspective. But Whoa. we should not have won that fight. Holy shit. Okay. Oh, there we go. There's the button. Only to conflict. Punch. It only hits Reinhardt. He's at 100 HP. Punch is going to hit Ben Best with Discord. That's pretty hard. Oh, note got the finishing blow, though. So that wasn't even one of the three. It's just Doomfist is so good against goats on this point. It's so good. Oh, hey, yeah, it's Unko. It's, I mean, in general, Doomfist is very good for retake on 2CP. Uh-oh. Spaghetti. -o. Yeah. Uppercut onto Nico. I don't like seismic slams like that. They do such little damage. Like, that seismic slam did, like, 20 damage if it had hit anything. He's going to come back in with the punch to finish off Nico. <laughs> we, we are all inside the point because of the nut bomb. But... Yeah. Hi. Oh, yeah, just a cleanup kill on Sumo. Okay. Wasn't as impressive as we thought it was. So, like, was the, did the Hammond work out? Is that what we're thinking? Like, was it an, actually a 9 billion IQ play? What did Surefor actually get done here on this Hammond? Got it. Yeah, nope. I still would have preferred Sombra or I don't know. There's a long list of things that could have done better than that. <clears throat> okay. Well, did you have anything else you wanted to add, Unko? I can't believe we lost this fight. You can't, yeah. Yeah, you, you should have won that one. You definitely should have won that one. And now, like, we're per coming up pretty close to trance here, too. What is going on? Oh, this was the Poco Bomb that I was like, what? I was really confused why Poco Bombed here. 
So here's Boko. He gets chased into a tiny room. Oh. Yeah, I didn't understand that one. Well, I didn't. Like ben best charged in and got agilities, but it doesn't really matter. You guys are so heavily into the stagger phase. There were like there were a couple bombs during the series that I was wondering what Poco was doing. I, I, I generally don't question experts, but uh, it did not immediately make sense here. So here we're still on the Hammond. We at least have mines now, so that's good. Like now it makes sense to play Hammond here. Do do do. Think he fat fingered? Could have. Always oh, it happens to pros too, right? There's an area denial. There's a knock up. We have to use trance. Grab is out. We don't. We do have barrier yet. Barrier afterward, but it's after Crimzo is dead. This is fucking chaos. Holy shit. I think you, you really need somebody. You should switch after the the fight. Like especially when we're playing or could be playing Winston here. Um, like having that mega to deny you guys to retreat to and for us to use it for a little bit of extra sustain against ghosts running. You know, how many 1v1s end up happening underneath that bridge? Having that mega is just so massively important. And then yeah, you have no, the and you don't have enough damage too. You don't yeah. have enough damage without. So, yeah. I much would have preferred sure for staying on uh, Sombra here. But hey. He kept them on because he had ultimate, I think. And you guys cap this finally. Not a bad time. Yeah. Not a bad time. <laughs> You're gonna do the same, no? I think. I don't remember, I don't remember either. Score. Let's go. Zero, two, two. Okay, so it's now our turn to attack. So you guys do the same thing, don't you? You do the same thing we did. I you know, you guys no, play no, no. Lucio. Are you saying so? What's the idea no, behind no, the Luciana no, 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 no. here? We play. We play Anna instead of Zen. Why? I agree with you, why? But you because should know why, <laughs> you're literally the honor. I mean... Like, Ready. the problem is like, if I'm not playing Zen, we don't have a defensive ultimate for the blade, and most of the team are playing dive on this part because it's difficult to play something else. So, if I'm not playing Zen, we don't have a defensive ultimate for the blade. So yeah, I think Zen is good, but I don't know, we don't really like Zen Mercy because for us, since the mercy is nerfed, since the mercy is nerfed, like there is not enough sustain. There's not enough sustain. Okay, fair enough. But like, like against dive, so, you don't need a lot of sustain when you have fortify. You know, you yeah. have the bomb to remake, or you know, you could use the trance to sustain or something like that. So, like the only times that we ever used um, mercy and Ana was when we wanted to farm ultimates really, really fast. So if we for example, we're doing specific goats defense, or if we were expecting to defend against goats on things like Volskaya first, we would hold extremely aggressive, and then like XQC would go in for crazy amounts of uh, of cleave, and we'd be like damage boosting, uh, and then whoever like retreated would get healed by the Ana, while the Mercy focused on blue beaming, so we got ultimates like as fast as possible during that first fight. But like that's like really the only situation. Um, oh, there was one other situation. We tried um, Mercy and Lucio. No, sorry. We tried Mercy and Ana in the Farah Sombra swapping to Farah Widowmaker comp, but we just found that Lucio was such a better pick there. Again, defensive support ultimates and speed for repositioning. But uh, yeah, like the only time that after all of our like scrum practice that we found Mercy and Ana to really work out was if we were doing something really cheesy. We had hard scouted that they were going to play goats and we needed to. Um, like build on something like a Volskaya defense, but uh, yeah, I, I agree with you that Mercy Zenyatta I mean, is be honest, much better. Yeah, I think Zenyatta, Zenyatta is probably better. Yeah, for the defensive ultimate for the blade. But wh what we were doing, I mean, what I was doing, it's like if we don't have a defensive ultimate, I'm gonna keep my nano, and when you have your nano blade, I'm gonna nano the target who is gonna be focused yeah, by the blade. We do that quite and that's often what I as did. well. Like we nano a Zenyatta but, enduring a blade to try and yeah. keep him alive and counter, right? So we can. Yeah, keep I, I think I'm gonna, I'm target. gonna, I'm gonna nano wins because he's the first target agile focused. I think, and he didn't kill him. Okay. I mean, he didn't, he didn't kill anyone. Yeah, either. like one of the things, like having the Ana and Zenyatta together, if you nano the Zenyatta against a blade, not only does your Zen survive, but you keep the Discord up on the nano target so you can burn through him. 
Okay, I'll see how this works out for you guys. Because if memory serves, you get crushed pretty fast. The only reason it takes us so long is because uh, we have to get you I, off the I think the arch. it's on the second uh, defense. I mean, the... oh, soon gives up the arch pretty early okay. here. That's, that was one of like the main differences between your guys' playstyle and ours, is that uh, Soon loved playing that arch in the initial engagement there. Uh, we Agilities dies, and we don't defense Matrix your halt, which puts us in a really bad footing here. We're getting pincered. Oh, this is bad. So how, why are you, how are you guys allowing us to get out of this room? This should not be happening. So Benbest is still guarding front when we're in this room and he's gonna allow us out of this mega room. I think yeah, this is, should mean I think this like is you guys were playing Widow. Like Nico and Benbest are both not focusing, like we don't get stuffed here at all. It's like you don't even try when you let uh. us out. We were still shooting main when you guys were in the room, Megapuck. Yeah, you did, like you allowed both of us to get out. Uh, that was pretty poor engagement from us. Chat, close your eyes. I don't want to embarrass Canada. <laughs> oh. Do we still win this fight? Yeah, you win. Let's agree to never. Oh. Let's agree to never oh. ever talk about this fight again. This shit is disgusting. <laughs> Let's not talk about it. Going into the second point. <laughs> You, oh, you, you pass you pass the choke point like I don't know. <laughs> I, I think we need to swear a blood oath to just never acknowledge that fight ever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. On the upside, we're pretty coming pretty close to EMP and nanoblade. We use trance. We should be waiting for all three here. Should be waiting for all three here. Do we though is the question. Ben Best gets forced out. Oh, this one! I wanted to look at this one. Agilities was sure he was in defense matrix. This happened twice where Agilities we thought got slept through defense matrix. Wait, what happened? Agilities gets nanoed. Oh, it's just a sleep. Yeah, it's this fight. Oh, I wonder who's gonna sleep dart him. I'm not sure, but I think it's me, bro. Does Note get his DM turned around? Uh, oh, I don't think he got it up in time. Stop, stop, stop. Nope, that dart is clear. That dart is clearing away. Note's defense matrix is not going to stop that. <laughs> Unlucky. Go, just go. Just go? Just go? <laughs> just... Hey, dragon, do you want to go? You want to see this blade get slept? No. <laughs> Yoink. Yoink. Nice start, dude. That keeps you all alive. I didn't see that happen! Oh no! I didn't see that happening when I was actually watching the games. Oh my god. <laughs> that that must have been what tilted sure for. That tilted sure for! Now I know! Oh <laughs> Oh, now I know why he swapped off Sombra. <laughs> oh man. Now, now, it, it has all become clear. <laughs> Wait, you swept up some blood because of that, you think? Probably. It, is, no. I'm it has EMP here, right? Yeah. Boom. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, that sucks. Only yeah, Surefort doesn't like hard tilt or anything. Surefort tilting is like, I'm going to go on heroes I can carry now. <laughs> 
So he'll go on Hanzo. And I think he also deletes Nico. So I think he was actually pretty proud of this Hanzo swap. Uh, well, you, you guys are winning 2-0. He can't steal. Possible. I'm, I'm not so sure about that one. But uh, I'm pretty sure <laughs> Sure 4 comes out and just uh, deletes Nico with Storm Arrows here. Is it here or is it on the next one? <laughs> Excuse me, he didn't even this. see him. Yeah, I was right there. This is what opens it up, right? This is what opens it up right here. So, sure four wants to carry. Sure four is gonna fucking carry whether you like it or not. So this is how this fight went really bad for you. Sure four's up. We lost this fight. Boom! Storm Boom. arrow. Storm arrow's Nico through the crack. Yeah, he was pretty proud of that one. Yeah, okay, look, back, back, back. Where? Where do you want me to go? Oh, this fight, this fight. Like, this okay, fight, we just kind of, we okay, force look, you out look the of back crow's lane. nest. Look, look, look our back lane. Or you. Uh, I mean, when, when, okay, when XQC, when XQC jump on us, not before. Oh, this before. is, is this where Air Winds wakes up XQC? Yeah, yeah, no, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, but I don't mind about that. Like, it, look. Look when before that when he jump on point when XQC is gonna jump on point on when he's gonna jump on point on me, okay. like we we are wins and me we yeah. we are not together. So we force you out of Crow's Nest and Sherfor no, but... gets the kill on Nico. Look, we are split. We are split. I don't have the speed. Oh, we are so bad. <laughs> I died. By a solo monkey! <laughs> you okay, Uncle? Fuck! We win. I'm like pretty sure we win this fight. I don't know why my frame rate suddenly got so bad. If I don't die, we don't lose. It's, honestly, it's the first time I see the VOD. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Yeah. No! I didn't watch this VOD through in advance either, so. so yeah, we win. Nice little block from Agilities, and that'll clean things up. Oh, man. Professional Overwatch at its finest. Score. Professional. <laughs> 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 Boy, am I watching this? Professional Overwatch at its finest. Are you watching on the stream or on Discord? Uh, uh, on Discord. Okay, okay. I'll keep it on then. If they bring this viewer to Overwatch League, how many more hours per week will the coaches have to work? This will actually streamline our job so fucking much. It'll make our job way easier. Way easier. You won't have to, like, squint through blurry spectator imaging in third person to try and figure out fights and ability usage through walls and shit. So this is like the exact same setup, right? We don't have to explain yeah, this setup. It's the exact it's same thing. Be or, or why are you guys here? Here's the question. Why are you on the... Uh, uh, why did you choose to do Tracer instead of Sombra? Uh, it's a good question. Only soon know that, I think. Did you guys not... know? It, was it our pick for Anubis? No, it was your pick for Anubis. Wait. No, he played... He played... Tra oh, wait. Oh, sorry. No, no. I didn't understand the question. Yeah, well, so, um, like, we play Sombra Dive. Yeah, yeah. Why do you guys play Tracer Dive? So, the, the, question, the question is why we are playing Tracer instead of Sombra. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, because of the... Maybe because of the of the trap? Like, uh, you know the, yeah, the yeah, trap yeah, yeah. we... Okay. You're easier I to think clear it, it out? Yeah this, is the, yeah, this is the reason, I think. Okay. To remove the trap on the side. Yeah. So this is what like you guys failed to do, and we're actually not bad at just stuffing you in. But unfortunately, do we just get both of our supports fucking obliterated? Oof. Why was Crimzo there? Why was Crimzo there? Oh, 
Oh, what unlucky timing. Crimzo fell off the high ground right as you guys dove in. That sucks. One mistake, and everything falls apart. Okay. Well, that was a quick take. <laughs> Sometimes you just yeah, fuck up. I, I, I think this position is bad in general. He shouldn't play there. He should play on the platform. Like uh, on which Pretty platform? Far. Like the one back where, here. Where I'm playing with Anna. To be like back like, here, right? Like, You're playing in these uh, two platforms? No, here, on, on the right. Fuck. Wait. The, um, <laughs> uh, above the spoon, above the spoon. Okay. Oh, like there? No, 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 no. <laughs> above the, the, the spoon. You understand, right? No, you, I, no I have no you, idea. You see the spoon? You see the spoon? The like, spawn. Um, oh, this yeah. spawn. Yeah, so yeah, it was spawn. these platforms. It was Just these above. Platforms. Yeah. So uh, this platform, right. and you can rotate yeah. to these platforms through the stairs. That's what I suggested the first time. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this one. This one. <laughs> You're fucking trolling me, Uncle. No, it's because I, I, I don't know if I'm live, you know? If I'm live, like, on um, yeah, Discord. You, Discord is in... Uh, Discord should be no delay. Discord should be no okay, delay. Okay, okay, okay. That's funny. Okay, so what are we going into? And then, like, sure, far playing Mystery Heroes, so May. Yes, this was totally planned. Set strats. Yep. It's almost worked, too, because we almost walled you off here. Boink. Didn't work. Julius gets stunned out, still gets out. Nano on a Ben Best. I don't think that's going to do much while we have May and Lucio. Yeah. Oh, we still don't kill him. Holy shit. Does no get back into mech? He does, because Grimzo heals him up. Sure, for some trouble. Agility is in some trouble. Like, at least we've got the Ana this time, but again, Bonnie and Ana are split. Or Bonnie and Ana. Bonnie and Crimzo are split here, right? So Bonnie's on this side here. But Crimzo's here. This is another mistake. <laughs> Bonnie and Crimzo actually get split a lot more than I initially thought. It's a mistake on me for, like, not identifying this. This happens... This happened quite a few times in this series. Enough that I should have recognized this and corrected it. Okay, AKM told me, AKM told me we are playing Tracer instead of Sombra because there is a lot of high ground on the first point of Temple. And in general, the mobility of Tracer is way better. The mobility of Tracer is better than yeah. Sombra yeah. when it comes yeah, to yeah. high grounds. Mm, apparently, yeah, that's what he said. I mean, that that's the reason why we are playing Tracer instead of Sombra. On this point. Hmm. I'm not sure if I agree. Like, you can drop off the high ground as Sombra if you have your tra translocator on the high ground in order to pursue and still be able to translocate back up to the high ground, whereas on, like, Tracer, you'd have to do recall in order to do that. And I feel like recall is a more valuable resource to use in other situations in other ways. The larger impact of EMP, as well as if you, like, lose the first two fights, higher safety, especially for breaking, like, Arisa comps. So... I can yeah. see the logic behind it, I guess. I still think Sombra's a better play, though. Yeah, I agree. Sombra is OP as fuck. I mean, in 2018, it's kind of sad to see Tracer instead of Sombra. Soon is a good Tracer, though. Is soon. Yeah, 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 but Sombra is too and, strong. And AKM really. was the one playing Sombra, right? When you do play Sombra, it's AKM, right? Uh, it depends, I think. Okay. Because it's AKM on Sombra and soon on Brigida when you play it in Goats. Yes, yes. Okay. But sometimes uh, soon was playing Sombra too. I don't know. Maybe yeah, I don't know. I don't okay. remember, but both play Sombra. Two to four. This is a five to four game. Five fucking seconds too. Ugh. <laughs> Unlucky. Okay, I can't say it because we against. I, no, I, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> you know what he said? Okay. No, I don't. But I just assume no, if you're not gonna say it, it's disrespect. No, no, <laughs> it's I mean, BM. No, 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 no. It's like he said. He's, no, I can't. <laughs> no, but he said okay. which one? I, I, I gotta which tab one? in to yeah, see what he's saying. Then no, no, I'm, I'm wait, gonna tab in. Give me, no, no, give me a second. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh man. 
Oh, you didn't type it to me as well. Oh, man. Let me in on this. Oh, you didn't <laughs> No, he said because in general, where we where we were playing against, for example, USA, yeah, we our Sombra couldn't pass the ch the choke. I mean, the main gate. Oh, you because don't... they were shooting everywhere. Oh, know? we defense matrix uh, our Sombra through. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we we could do that too. But I don't know. It's yeah, there is so always something up. Uh, whenever we're playing Sombra and we're not going all together, we either go through first and Sombra sneaks through later instead of trying to force Sombra through first, or. Note will uh, defense matrix so that Surefork can clear the choke while remaining invisible. So we encounter that same problem too, and we do like the the standard spy checks to try and prevent uh, like Sombra's from moving around. But uh, our counter was either move, even though Sombra is faster, have her wait until like the core clears the point, or to just defense matrix Surefork through, and then he can like sit in this mini yeah. room for like a random period of time before leaving. So if the diva wants to like continuously shoot this place forever, then her attention is not on like the main tank, and we can kind of put a lot of pressure through he, that mega room. He, he said the I problem with Samba is like you can't pass I grant I grant to I grant with Samba on this map. This is true. That that is a very valid reason. From like this platform to that platform, yeah, yeah, yeah. and from like this dome to this platform, you can't clear that on Sombra without having used your uh, translocator, which that would be pretty bad because then you're heavily committed to that engagement. I mean, it's yeah, it's more easy to address, for a tracer to follow up the, the engage, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's why. Incoming in 30 seconds. <laughs> this map was such a clusterfuck. Holy moly. I didn't realize how bad it was until I was <laughs> watching it back. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, like, we're running the same thing. You guys are running the same thing. Let's see how we do it the second time. Soon starts up on this arch. Like This is the thing that slows us down the most, is trying to uh, get soon the fuck off this arch. There's no real easy way for us to do it, because Ben Best has like a set shield spot. So we need to like soft dive you guys repeatedly with our tanks. Whoa, it's so risky what you did. Yep. That's what we have the, to the do, only though. thing you have to do, no, no, no. The only thing you have to do is to all go at the same time when you when the gate is open and all, your support is not gonna die with the matrix and bubble. Oh, you you mean the like the way the yeah, world your support out of the your yes. support stayed in the spawn instead of follow the world team. Yeah, yeah, those are like things. Those are things that we could like correct if we were spending a lot of time working on Anubis, but just little minor errors when you have to prepare for all nineteen maps, right? Yeah. Ben Best missed his high ground shield, so soon can't go up there. Sucks. <laughs> Poco's just spy checking like crazy. Oh, well, that's going to give away Surefor's position. Wherever he is. I don't actually know where Surefor is right now. Oh, there. <laughs> Found him. So again, like, we're not super worried unless we manage to farm our ults, use them, and die. Uh, or if we don't farm our ults in sub two minutes. So we're on very much on pace. Or like, our EMP is not, but our Nanoblade is on pace uh, for, like, a post or a sub two minute time. So we're not we're not really stressed about this. Flashes the tire, gonna get wins. Oh, not gonna get wins because because of you. Not only like with the uh, heal buff, but, yeah, uh, no, no, no. and the sleep, Unko. That was insane. Stop! Stop! No. <laughs> it still didn't matter, but that was crazy. I like it. I like it. Okay. <laughs> 2 HP so clutch. Yes, we lost the fight. Everyone will. Okay. Next fight. Now we have EMP and Primal and Trance and Bomb. You should still get fucked here. 
Like, we can just EMP your tanks if you aggro dive here. I don't know why we didn't immediately EMP that dive. Where was Sh where was Sherpa? Was he, like, but Yeah, okay. That's unfortunate. We still go in without Crimson. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Ow. <laughs> I... Okay, so we lose Crimzo. We didn't EMP the initial dive, but we EMP them on the return. XQC comes in, gets hacked, gets killed. Sherpa does manage to land the hack on soon to kill, and then Banny comes in with a transcendent, which heals up Note. Poco's bomb comes in, doesn't find anything. Note goes to contest Ben Best. In the back, Poco's gonna get farmed. Agility's blades. It doesn't look like he gets the reset off the Poco kill either. Ben Best comes in, but gets fucking deleted because we have Discord. Even Nana won't keep him alive. And now we have reinforcements. So we pulled a Korea. Ooh, nice hack. Or did the hack not execute? Is this one of the another fight where Bandy yeah. just pops off like crazy? I think it's this moment when I slept uh, exclusive. Because Bandy, I think, outduels soon here. Yeah, so like that's something that Korea likes to do a lot is ult when they're down, especially when you're like being a little bit more complacent or um, anything of the sort. So maybe like maybe we did plan it that way because it's th something that we've discussed. But honestly, that would be pretty generous to assume that that was the case. So EMPing even after having lost Crimzo, knowing that we have Banny on the uh, trance to sustain until Crimzo reinforces. Oh, excuse me. Um, interesting play. Interesting choice there. Ready for battle. Okay. We do it again! Because it's Anubis, and the fun never ends. I think there's only really one kind of point in this fight that actually matters, and that was when uh, Soon gets uh, hacked, killed. This was a long map. Holy. So you guys go in through the left side by the Mega. We are all doing the same in defense all the time. Yeah, it's like there's no... like This is this has been the Anubis meta for fucking ever. Like it's yeah. the best... There's only like minor adjustments, you know. The fun of discussing Anubis is like Sombra or Tracer, Mercy or Ana. Like <laughs> it's about as in-depth as the discussion you get about Anubis gets because kind of... I feel like Anubis... First point is the map that is the closest of any map to being quote unquote solved. So yeah, this is the point where Agilities goes a little bit too aggro. Note tries to save him, also loses mech. And then so Surefire gets the hack onto the health back here. And Nico is up here ready to touch. Or sorry, he's camping the translocator. And then Soon is gonna be the one to touch. Yes, yes, soon soon, soon yeah. is on the point at like six point eight seconds, right? So, and then he's going to decloak, and he steps off at like 3.2 seconds. And you need to be on the point at 3 seconds or less in order to trigger overtime. So I think Soon thought that he triggered overtime, but he stepped off at 3.2 seconds and gets killed by Surefor. And then Nico thinks that overtime is going to get triggered. When it doesn't, he dashes on. Yeah, people were blaming Nico for that, but it was, it was like the, I think it was just a miscommunication. It was not the plan. It was not the plan. Yeah, so that's what happened. Is that's uh, soon, and I think no matter what, the, the fight it. was lost. No matter I, what, I think it was. Like it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. It's not a C9. You weren't winning anyway. Yeah. But uh, soon thought he triggered overtime, and when he didn't, Nico's like, "Oh damn, I could have touched." So. And yes, I'm talking to Unco right now. 
Okay, and then I don't think it was the the kind of winning fifth point was all that exciting either. Oh. Yeah, we're gonna finish this up quick and kind of host things over towards Arrow. Ready for battle. <laughs> Looking at a 27-minute Anubis game is pretty, pretty tedious. Holy moly, I probably should have, like, skipped some of these runs. Nah, I am not in the U.S. yet. Okay, here we go. Bubbling spawn, reflecting, still being stuffed by soon. Still having Crimson and Banny playing split. Still taking us so long to actually get soon out of this perch spot. I feel like you've not you've done this before. I feel like I should have had yeah, scouting yeah. information on this and like a set play <laughs> to break it. But again, that's an oversight on my part. In our group stages. Yeah, you did it in groups. I don't know why thing. we didn't identify it. I don't know. Your job. It was my job. Did not do it. I blame you. I blame me too. <laughs> you blame yourself. <laughs> I thought Nico got hacked here. Was it that Note ate the concussion mine? Because I thought the only reason Nico died here was because he was hacked. How did Nico actually die here? So did Note eat the concussion, which prevented Nico from escaping? Yes. Yes, he did. Like, okay, so in general, with Junkrat, you have to put the mine before the engage yes like to yes. yeah to be able to jump back before the matrix came on you i don't know how to explain it in english but yeah yep Seems no that's correct i i just from having watched it during the game i thought that sure got the hack onto nico which triggered the dive but it looks like we just kind of went for it and note managed to eat the conch and then uh, this is going to just lead to us going five four and then the match being three zero I really think that this tool is going to like just increase the level of the gameplay across all tiers so much so quickly. This is a pretty impressive tool. Well. GG. GG. It was a closer series than the scoreline implied. I've said that once. I'll say it a hundred times, but uh, both teams could have done a lot better. A lot better there. But yeah, thanks for kind of hopping on. Was close. It was close. very close. Like a five I mean, to four. Every map was were close, no? Oh, every map. Every map was close. Yeah, every map. Busan could have gone to your, uh, uh, in favor of you guys if we didn't have two millisecond perfect EMPs. You could have had Eichenwald if we didn't have like three or four different clutch shit things happen up at the ending at Eichenwald. It was really insane how close these this series was and how lucky it was. So all three of the maps were incredibly close and 3-0 doesn't do how, like, I want to say how mm. good of a series, but honestly, there's a lot of mistakes. I mean, I mean to be honest, I don't, like saying we, I don't like saying we, we, we got lucky. Like, I mean, you got lucky. Like, we just played bad in general. I don't know. Fair enough.